fans here for the 187th consecutive time. The Mac beats the Big Ten today. The Huskies of Northern Illinois taking on number four Michigan. Terry Gannon along with former pro bowler Jamal Anderson and Scott Walker and huge expectations for the Wolverines this year. Jamal after another Rose Bowl season, another share of the Big Ten title and two offensive stars who made huge impacts on the Big Ten in their freshman seasons last year. They're back. Yeah, huge expectations for this season and two huge players coming back. Obviously, Chan Henney coming back as quarterback took over last year for Tim Gutierrez, who was hurt, comes in, completes over 60% of his passes, 25 touchdowns as a true freshman. And if that wasn't good enough, you have another true freshman and Mike Hart comes in in the running back position, rushes for over 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns. Michigan offensively is loaded, although they do have to replace one Braylon Edwards. Lloyd Carr in his 11th season and on the other side of the football field, Joe Novak, who has done a remarkable job at the helm for Northern Illinois in his 10th season as head coach. The two are very good friends. They were on the Illinois staff back in the late 70s. They and their wives used to play mixed doubles in tennis and uh, still to stay in touch. So Novak comes here to Ann Arbor to take on Lloyd Carr. And for Northern Illinois, this will not be a pushover for Michigan today. This is a team that also went 9-3 and three last year. They had a share of the title in the MAC West and then won their first bowl game in 21 years, beating a very good Troy squad in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. It's that time of the year. College football opening up this weekend and a gorgeous afternoon here in Ann Arbor. You see the mist, the temperatures in the mid-70s, the humidity 59% right now, bit of a breeze, but sunny all afternoon long. It's been terrific actually throughout the week here in Ann Arbor. Northern Illinois won the toss. They have deferred, so Michigan will receive the opening kick. Mentioned the huge expectations. Right. Michigan also opening up with three straight games at home yeah. this year. Next week, it's Notre Dame. Joe. Yeah, you know, this is a great schedule for them. They're coming in, playing against Northern Illinois, a team that we talked about is not a pushover, one of the powerhouse teams in the MAC. But then they're home again next weekend against uh, against Notre Dame, who's got a game tonight on ABC as well. So, you know, this is a great situation for University of Michigan. It's going to be interesting to see what happens offensively. You get a look at Steve Breston right there, a guy who, a great returner, had over 300 yards all-purpose offense, and he's going to be one of the keys, or one of those people they're going to look to not replace Braylon Edwards, because you can't replace a guy like Braylon Edwards, but step up and pick up some of the slack and, do, and some of the production that Braylon Edwards brought to this football team last year. Chris Nendrick getting us underway here at Michigan Stadium. It's Grant Mason who will take it at about the 10. Looks for room, hit hard at the 25 and falls ahead to the 26-yard line. And that's where the Wolverines will start for the first time this afternoon here in Ann Arbor. What a season Chad Henney had last year, completing 60% of his passes, over 2,700 yards, a freshman All-American. And the team really didn't find out he was going to start that first game until a day or two before the opener. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every, every, you know, it was a big thing about it is coming in as a true freshman. Michigan, traditionally, these guys don't play that much. Henney comes in, and he comes in and plays really well. So it's first and ten with Hart in the backfield. Brian Thompson now the fullback. Kevin Dudley led the way last year. And here's Hart on the left side, fighting his way up to about the 28, maybe the 29. The Outback Steakhouse starting lineup. The backs and receivers for Michigan. You know all about Hart, and we just told you about Breston trying to replace Braylon Edwards, but a lot of help for him with Avant, Massacoy, a very good tight end. The offensive line tackle Jake Long is out for a while with an ankle injury, and at center, it's Adam Krause back off an injury, and he is from New Orleans. His family is safe. They got out to Jackson, Mississippi, and now are right here in Ann Arbor watching today's game. Second and seven, Henny to throw. Got his man across the 30, out to the 33, and that's the big tight end, Tim Massacoy, fifth-year senior from Pennsylvania. Defensive line from Northern Illinois, Ken West is the guy who leads the way up front. He can put pressure on the quarterback from Calumet, Illinois, and linebackers, three first-year starters, Blaylark, Hutton, and also Griffin, and it's Ray Smith who heads a secondary. He's got a great motor, the top returning tackler on this team, the Hansbro identical twins at the corners. Third and two, Hart over the left side across the 35, close to a first down with Sid. 
Mike Hart, the sophomore from Syracuse, New York, 5'9", 199 yards. And when you talk to him, as Michigan does get the first down, and you're up close without the pads, right. he's he is, a small guy. Yeah, he's not a big guy at all, but, you know, great pad level. Uh, you know, built similar, very similar to Warwick Dunn, who's had a tremendous amount of success, not only at Florida State, but obviously for the Atlanta Falcons. But that last play, third and two, you know, you're going to run behind your big dogs, Stenovich and Hennigy. David Underwood, the starter last year to start the season. Hart came on when he was injured against Notre Dame. Quick throw out, complete. There's Preston with room to run. Breaks outside and has another Michigan first down. Across midfield to the 48. Terry, you're getting a perfect look right now of why these people are so excited. Steve Preston, when healthy, is an explosive player. Now, he's not Braylon Edwards, but he is an explosive player in his own right. You see him catch the ball out there. He's going to start making people miss. Always looking to get extra yards not necessarily running out of bounds. The one thing people said that could be a criticism of him, Terry, was that he wasn't the biggest guy. Right. But in that situation, he's trying to get as many yards as he can. Preston out after the gain of 15. So another first down for the Wolverines. Hart. The middle for the 45 of Northern Illinois. Dustin Utchick, the junior from Wisconsin on the tackle. Yeah, you see that play right there. Brian Thompson, the thing you talked about in the opener, they're going to have to replace Kevin Dudley, a guy who Chris Perry ran behind for over 1,600 yards, and then last year Mike Hart ran behind for 1,400 yards. It's going to be kind of a fullback by committee. Brian Thompson is starting, but we're also going to see a guy by the name of Will Paul who was a defensive lineman that's coming over to play fullback. And then in this situation here, a lot of one back for Michigan. It'll be a Lebo also. A fullback in the mix. Quick throw incomplete. Jason Avant, the intended receiver, slipped initially. Yeah, you've been walking around at the uh, walkthrough yesterday. Everybody was talking about how much they love this surface. And you see right here, Avant trying to set him up, breaking to the outside, and he just loses the balance. Ball was still delivered right there, and it just bounced off his chest. Avant, the senior from Chicago, from Carver High School in Chicago, and one of the captains. Talked to him yesterday, and he said, that's been my biggest thrill because my teammates voted me a captain here. The same high school as Cassie Russell in Chicago, Carver. Deep drop, a lot of time for Henny. Got his tight end once again. Massacoy inside the 40. And close to another first down, he may have one for the Wolverines. And Tim Massacoy, a very big target, 6'4", over 250 pounds. A guy who came in, had aspirations of being a wide receiver. You're going to see a lot of him already two catches in this first drive. And you're also going to see a guy by the name of Tyler Ecker, another guy. And they said, you know, they, this might be, in this situation, also Massey, a young guy, a sophomore. This might be the best tight end group that they've ever had in Michigan. And maybe one of the best offenses you've seen in a long time here at Michigan because Hart and Henny are back and you have so many weapons including the tight ends play action for Henny again with a world of time going deep to the end zone through the hands of Preston and you said it Terry you set this play up obviously Michigan's going to get in they're going to try to run the ball set up with a play action we're going to get a look at it right here. Chad Henney has got all day, nobody in his face. He just throws it up there, and Breston breaks away from his guy, and he just, you know, stretches out to get the ball and just goes off his fingertips. The hesitation move, that's what freed him up. Israel Hansbro, one of the identical twins, at the corner on the coverage. But if you give Henny that much time, yeah. this is going to be a it, long this is day be for a, Yeah, especially with talent that he has in the receiving position, namely Steve Breston. Carl Tab in at one of the one-out spots in motion this time. Set up the screen. Slicing through his heart down to the 33. Scott Walker is with us, as I said, to open up the show. Scott, what do you have? Terry, well, thank you. A year ago, Mike Hart was the freshman that didn't know exactly how much he was going to play. Now, as he's dominating this drive, it's Kevin Grady, the freshman that is his game day roommate, who Hart is actually mentoring. Grady said, look, Hart has been so good with me, and now, you know, as Hart said also, it's important that all the things that were passed on to him, he's now passing on to his backup, who's going to play a significant role today, guys. Yeah, and Kevin Grady, I mean, Fans here in Michigan know all about him, the all-time leading rusher in the history of Michigan High School football as Avant has the catch down at the 15. Another first down, Israel Hansbrough having a tough time in the secondary. The gain is 18 for Avant. 
You get a look at Yvonne up here. Just does a, a simple corner route right here. Breaks inside, and there's nobody around him. You know, Adriel Hansbrough's playing so far off. You know, and Chad Henney's got time. This is going to be, you know, he's going he's gonna to throw to the right side of the football field all day. So far, Braylon who? <laughs> yeah. Yvonne, Massacoy, Hart in the backfield. Rustin, a lot of threats on this Michigan offense. First down, give it to Hart. Cut back that room inside the 10 and down to the 9. Adam Krause, a great block to spring him at the center spot. You know, the thing about that play, Terry, you, you, you know, we talked about this offseason, Henny being a part of the Michigan, Michigan program longer, understanding more of the offense from, from Terry Malone on, on to, you know, Coach Carr. Everybody says that he understands more, you know, more of the offenses. And you saw him go up to the line of scrimmage on that time and check at the line. When you, yeah, last year, they would have come in and run a play, and there would have been no audibles or situations. He said himself, it was maybe 50% of the playbook game last year because he was a first year starter. And a true freshman starter. Hart scrambling down near the five, close to another Michigan first down. But Hart, as Scott said, really taking Kevin Grady under his wing. And, you know, if you're Mike Hart, you're only a sophomore. Right. You could view Grady coming on campus as a major threat. Yeah, to I mean, not just that he's a true sophomore, he had. 1,400 yards rushing last year. He was the freshman of the year, one of the top running backs in the nation. All of a sudden, they come in with another guy who is the greatest rusher in the history of Michigan football you would think there would be, you know, adversaries. Look, they did the red zone last year. Hart right over the top inside the five. It'll be first and goal, Wolverines. We talked about Mike Hart's size, a guy who's only 5'9", about 190, but you see there's no hesitation to run him between the tackles, and that's what they've done. I mean, there's, there's been no pitches or anything to get him out on the corners. Everything has been between the tackles. Straight ahead football, and then the play action to uh, Avant and Massacoy. 14th play of this opening drive as Henny is going to talk things over with Lloyd Carr, Terry Malone on the sideline. So a timeout taken by the Wolverines as they look at... First and goal, Henny and Hart. The Henny Hart Show once again here on campus at Ann Arbor. And we talked to Lloyd Carr about their sophomore seasons and what's different. I think what Mike Hart and Chad Henny uh, were able to do as freshmen in this arena uh, is really special. I think uh, looking back at my coaching career, I don't remember two guys uh, who had the opportunities they did uh, that did as much with them. And he's with so much more of the offense now right. in and with the experience of Henny in a, a summer to watch tape to get stronger. He's put on about 10 pounds of muscle and Hart actually has lost a right. little bit of weight. Yeah, you know, it's the thing. Everybody in the Big Ten and the other coaches and people that are going to face this Michigan football team, you got to be concerned about this is a guy as a true freshman put up unbelievable numbers. He's coming in now with a better understanding of the offense, okay? He did throw for over 2,500 yards, 25 TDs, 60% of his passes. And then, you know, Mike Hart says, I wanted to be in better shape. I wanted to be able to break the long run. These are two guys that are committed to getting better each and every year, so he loses weight, and he is more explosive coming into this season. First and goal from the four. Massacoy in motion. Three tight ends in for Michigan right now. Quick drop. Fade to the corner. Caught. No signal yet. Got it. Touchdown. Avant, the catch, and a good one. Couldn't write it up any better. You see Jason Avant makes a good move inside, breaks out to the corner. Chad Henney puts the football where only Jason Avant is going to catch it. If he doesn't catch that ball, it's out of bounds. Kept the man, came down with a catch, and that's the question mark for Michigan this year because Raylan Edwards had that size to go high into the air. Garrett Rivas on for the extra point up and good. Henny could throw it up, he'd get it, and now Lamont taking over that role. So number four, Michigan, the long drive. They're on the board at 7-0, and the Huskies get it when we come back.
Chrysler Group's done it again with their most award-winning and freshest lineup ever. Chrysler Group vehicles are projected to retain their value better than Ford or GM. Chrysler Group vehicles have significantly improved quality over the last three years. You know, there's still something missing here. This Labor Day weekend, get employee pricing plus cash allowance on the remaining 2005 Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge models. So remember, if you can find a better car, buy it. Now we're talking. At Samuel Adams, we do 10,000 beer audits in the course of the year. We test the temperature. We look at the color. Martinez think we're crazy. They're just looking at the head, looking at everything. and I don't know what they're looking for. We check the lines in the faucets. And we also go and check Sam Adams' keg dates downstairs. If it's not fresh, we buy it back. When we have festivals here, we put out-of-code beer in the tank. People try to throw a ball and dunk him in some old Sam Adams. I'd rather put people into stale beer than stale beer into people. I'd like to redeem my credit card miles. Yeah, no. All you ever say is no. And yet you keep calling. That's it. I'm coming to find you. I am tired of no. Ooh, I'm shaking in my bright yellow shirt. You! You're going down! <laughs> Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, anytime. I should work at Capital One! What's in your wallet? Oh, yeah. 7-0 Wolverines. Northern Illinois about to get the ball. It was a tough drive for cornerback Adriel Hansbrough. I tell you what, if there's anybody on the football field that needs a Gatorade and a bench right now to sit out, <laughs> it's Adriel Hansbrough. I mean, you know, he was on the right side of the field. Guys were coming at him. Then he gets on the left side. They throw the fade for a touchdown over. And he's definitely going to have to come back and recruit. Number 39, AJ set to kick off. Adrian Davis back deep. It's Davis at his own goal line. He drops the football. Looking for room, spinning and only out to it's the seven yard line. I, te I tell you what, you know, Joe Novak, the head coach, told us, hey, my guys aren't going to be nervous, but I'll tell you one thing, if that doesn't look like nerves in the big house, I don't know what else is. He said, we've been in this situation before, my guys will be fine. We're not worried about 110,000. Well, he didn't get the memo. Adrian Davis, the backup tailback, just dropped it. And they have not played in front of over 100,000 fans before, but they have played in big BCS stadiums before. Beaten Maryland, Alabama, Iowa State last couple of years. Phil Horvath, two and one as a starter last year. Derek Wolf gets the call, no room along the left side. Wolf, the junior from Chicago, to the line of scrimmage, Grant Mason to tackle. That's going to be a critical importance today for Michigan to stay up on Garrett Wolf. He's an explosive guy with a lot of talent. On a gorgeous day here in Ann Arbor, Michigan with a 7-0 lead over Northern Illinois. Terry Gannon, Jamal Anderson, and Scott Walker. Henny at the end of that long drive to Jason Avon, who kept the feet in, the catch in the corner. And now it's second and 11 for Northern Illinois. Derek Wolf gets the call again. From their own five, got a hole over the left side and all the way out to the 23. And Jamal, you get a look at the speed that Absolutely. allowed him to gain over 1,600 yards a year ago. Yeah, Terry, we, you know, we were talking about it in, in just a moment ago. You see right here, uh, it's a simple draw play and where they're going to run on the left side of that line where Ben Luke and Doug Free are. And then Garrett Wolf breaks it in open field, and he's a guy who can take it all the way. Michigan is going to have to minimize the big plays, not just in this game, but throughout the season. And you're going to have to contain Garrett Wolf somehow. Phil Horvath, the numbers on him, he played in seven games last year, and he started three for an injured Josh Haldy. His big win was against Bowling Green, a very good team last year. Wolf out, and a solid game out to the 29. Outback Steakhouse starting lineup, backs and receivers. Wolf led the Mac in rushing, scoring, and all-purpose yards a year ago. A.J. Harris, his backup, gained over 800 yards, the top returning duo in terms of tailbacks in the nation. And a very good offensive line. Novak says it's one of the best he's been around ever, maybe the best. Doug Free, an all-Mac performer, one of three returning starters on the left side of the line. Second and four, just under eight to go here in the first. Quick drop, Horvath, quick throw, and a good catch. It was behind him. Sam Hurd hauls it in, and a first down for the Huskies. 
as we check out the Michigan defensive line took a lot of heat late in the year for not pressuring the quarterback Lamar Woodley the guy who will get them there the second leading tackler coming back this year Prescott Burgess everyone on campus talking about the junior from Warren Ohio maybe the next star in the making here in Ann Arbor in the secondary he's got to replace two All-Americans in Jackson and Shazer Leon Hall from Vista California the lone veteran starter back there Horvath swings it out to Wolf out of the backfield up to about the 45-yard line. Cut down by Burgess and McClintock. So Dr. Pepper College football kickoff weekend here on ABC. The Huskies of Northern Illinois, who won a bowl game for the first time in 21 years last year, taking on number four Michigan. A look at the opening touchdown. Four-yard pass from Henny. To Avant, and that's where we are. Seven nothing. It's second and a long three. As well, that has a long count at the line. AJ Harris, the backup, maybe just shy of a first down. May have fought with second effort to get there. We'll see. Yeah, this Michigan defense has been has been getting a heavy dose this first drive of uh, Garrett Wolf. Now all of a sudden you see AJ Harris come in in a second and short situation. A guy who's six one, about two twenty five, but explosive as well the guy who runs 4-3 and his brother is on the track team here in Michigan yeah he's in the stands today and he he's wondering whether his brother would uh, be cheering for Michigan or Northern Illinois today family or college loyalty see which one is stronger straight over the top and it should be a first down for Northern Illinois yeah, you're talking about headaches in the offseason for the University of Michigan. Everybody was talking about the defense and how many points they gave up in the end of the year and how they had a hard time against athletic quarterbacks or other athletic players. Well, this is uh, this is a recipe for disaster, Terry. This is a spread offense that Northern Illinois runs. They'll have three or four receivers in. They have two very talented quarterback, uh, excuse me, running backs. And the thing for them is they have to contain this ground attack and make Phil Horvath throw the ball. Straight drop this time for Horvath, who Swings it out to the flat as Wolf powers his way across the 45. So Wolf showing you some speed and some strength. Woodley, that's the man who hit him or got hit. Yeah, you watch the pressure here. Look, up the middle is Massey coming in, and he's got pressure all over him. And Lamar Woodley, a very talented guy, comes from the outside, but Phil Horvath was still able to get the ball out to his main weapon. That's Gary Wolf. As Wolf takes a rest on the sideline, and Novak says. They're interchangeable. Wolf and Harris. Different backs. Harris is bigger. 6'1, 223. Wolf goes about 177 pounds. Swings it out again inside the 40. Britt Davis, who is a backup quarterback and a red shirt freshman from Broadview, Illinois, will get some snaps at the wide receiver spot. Yeah, there was a reason that Phil, I mean, excuse me, there's a reason that Joe Novak decided to give this quarterback competition and, and wait all the way to up to this Michigan game to decide who's going to be his quarterback. That guy right there, Britt Davis, a very, very talented guy, a guy who, if he was playing quarterback with his mobility and athleticism, would definitely be a nightmare for Michigan. If you base the things off what Cedric, I mean, uh, what uh, Vince Young did for last year to them in the Rose Bowl. Went to Riverside Brookfield. Broadview, Illinois, along with Chaton Powers and his brother, Brandon Davis, all three on this squad. Horvath moves straight ahead. Twisting, lost his helmet, but has the first down. Not sure that that's how they teach you to go down as a quarterback. No, you see Phil Horvath here under pressure again, and you know, gets some gets out of the pocket, and he runs. And at the last second, you're gonna see Willis Barringer come flying in, and he just hey, he avoided a big time shot by spinning but losing his helmet. And you know, as a quarterback, you definitely want to see the guy slide. And you don't right. want to see him going down head first or with a helmet off. Or Britt Davis will stay in the game as the quarterback. Jared Carter now in at a wideout spot along with Blake Turner. 11th play of the drive. So the Wolverines at a 14th play drive. And now number 11, Wolf gets the call wrapped up in the backfield. Chris Graham on the tackle. You see Sean Crable come in there on a, on a blitz last minute, and Wolf got away from him. First up, Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, NFL opening kickoff with the Stones there. Green Day, Santana, many more brought to you by Sprint then. At 9 Eastern, the Raiders taking on the Super Bowl champs, the Patriots, and former Michigan quarterback Tom Brady. It all happens Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Second and 12, Harris in at tailback. There's the throw over the middle. Hurd's got another one. Should have a first down again. Sam 
Jalen Hurd, the senior from San Antonio. And Jamal, how impressive is this drive, which started at the five? You know, Terry, this is a very impressive job, but this is a very, very balanced football team last year. You know, you watch right there where Sam Hurd catches the ball. He's a big guy, 6'2", about 190 pounds, and he is not going down. And it's just like Northern Illinois. These guys rushed for over 2,800 yards and threw for nearly 2,500 yards. And you're getting a great example, a look of it today, the balance that this team has. Horvath giving it off to Harris. Gain of one as we take it to New York. And John Saunders. John. Well, the Taco Bell update. We have overtime for Ron Zook's first game as a head coach in Illinois against Rutgers. Brace it to E.B. Halsey, who goes 20 yards, and it sets up the overtime winner. Pierre Thomas from a couple of yards out, passes his way across. The Illini win in OT. Probably a little closer than Vic would have won it in his Absolutely. Uh, the Illini getting the win. Horvath, good block from Wolf. Complete inside the 10, fighting down to the 7. Jared Carter, the junior from Missouri. Again, Sean Crable was coming in. Uh, excuse me, Prescott Burgess was coming in. Blitz on the left side. Garrett Wolf was able to pick him up. And you see Horvath come out there and, and complete the pass to Sean. Cra uh, excuse me, Sam Hurd on the uh, excuse me uh, on the outside to the receiver Jared Carter, who turns it in. But you know, I, I made the comment when he dropped when when uh, he dropped the ball in the opener that Northern Illinois might not be ready. Well, this football team definitely doesn't look like they're worried about coming into Michigan. Garrett Wolf now the lone setback. Um, Third and five. Horvath checking off the play, throwing deep to the end zone in the corner. Incomplete contact, no call. Heard the intended receiver, Grant Mason, on the coverage. It was kind of a carbon copy of what you saw Michigan do in their first touchdown. Sam Hurd comes in and breaks out to the fade route. <laughs> Oh, man, it's, uh, Grant Mason's hands were all over him, running him out of bounds. Not a catchable ball, Exactly. Perhaps. It was well out of bounds. So her to the sideline, brings up fourth down, and Chris Nendrick on for a 24-yard attempt. Nendrick up and good. So the sophomore from Naperville, Illinois, with the Huskies on the board. Long, impressive drive coming off the same from Michigan. It's 7-3 early on at the Big House. Nice ride. Thank you, Mocha Coca. Chrysler and Jeep came up on Buku Awards. And Dodge trucks last as long as the Deagle Double Chisel. Plus, I got the hookup, nephew, for sure. You know, I'm not too sure of what you just said. Now everybody gets a great deal. For shizzle, I could zizzle. This Labor Day weekend, get Employee Pricing Plus on remaining 2005 models. If the ride is more fly, then you must buy. That's what I hear. Dr. Pepper. One taste, and you get it. Oh. This is not what smart travelers oh. do. <laughs> but this is, for our lowest rates on a great car, there's just one place to go. Thrifty.com. Book smart. I'm Dale Hart Jr. Welcome to a new generation of Wranglers. New fits. New comfort. New styles. Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new styles. Michigan with the lead, 7-3, but an impressive 16-play, 86-yard drive 
for Phil Horvath and Northern Illinois, and they got on the board with a 24-yard field goal. Yeah, you know, Terry, it didn't start pretty, pretty. Adrian Davis drops the ball and has to go back and get it, and they started off with terrible field position, but they sure came out, and, you know, Garrett Wolf being the multi-talented threat he is, and then you throw in Britt Davis, the backup quarterback, catches the ball, and Phil Horvath looked very relaxed. You know, this is a guy who's had some playing experience, started four games for him last year, and they came in and drove down the field methodically on Michigan, showing the balance that this offense possesses. Horvath, six of seven for 49 yards in the air on that drive. This one's taken by Breston, who's a dangerous return man. Got him by the ankles at the 22, though, and that's where Michigan will start their second offensive series of the game and their season. First and 10 from the 22 for Chad Henney. And Mike Hart and company when we come back. You see him in your rearview mirror, and suddenly you're the world's best driver. You hit the brakes, hang up the cell phone, use your turn signal. Sound familiar? Allstate knows there's a good driver in each of us. A police car shouldn't be the only thing that brings it out. So Allstate cuts safe drivers a break, up to 20%. Reward works better than punishment. That's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? I play four instruments, five including my car. This car's a 91 with 93,000 miles. I like to keep it running good and sounding sweet. My engine used to sound terrible. I put Max Life oil in and it runs smooth and strong. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. Protect this house! You beat the big guys every year. You know they can't touch you. They know they can't touch you. How did the team stay motivated? If you don't get motivated when you put on the armor, then you ain't got a pulse, man. It's fourth down. The ball sits at the Under Armour 10-yard line. Goliath down to its last shot. Uh -huh. According to most people, Tuesday, September 20th is just another day. But according to Jim... I'm here with my son in his first baseball game. Can this day get any better? Well, it's also the season premiere of Jim. It just got better! According to Jim, 8-7 Central, only on ABC. 2.34 left in the first here at the Big House in Ann Arbor. Terry Gannon along with Jamal Anderson, Scott Walker, and Michigan opening up its second series of the game. First and ten from its own 22-yard line. 14-play drive on the opening series. Here comes Mike Hart, a big initial hole, plus the 30. He's got a first down for the Wolverines. With Dr. Pepper, college football kickoff weekend on ABC, brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste, and you get it. Dodge, you can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series, and Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. Gain of 12 for Hart, and another first and 10 for Michigan. Northern Illinois has got to figure out some way to stop this offense. You know, the defensive line of Northern Illinois is, is going to have to just pick it up. Obviously, when you see Mike Hart there, you're going to have to worry about Mike Hart as a running fan. And, you know, that's something that Lloyd Carr talked about, how he's improved. Another thing he's improved in the offseason is catching the football out the backfield. But the defensive line for Northern Illinois is, you know, got a two-headed monster to worry about. Number one, you got Mike Hart coming at you. Then number two, you know, when uh, Chad sits back there, he's got a lot of time. So Hoffman will, uh, will Wilson, Pittman, and West, they got to get more pressure on him because Chad, if Chad Henney sits back there with the time that he's had so far, it's going to be a long day. Now the first down and our first look at the heralded freshman, Kevin Grady, all-time leading rusher in Michigan high school history, with the carry right now, over 8,000 yards in high school and ahead for a gain of about two. You hear the ovation from the crowd. You watch this right here and you see Tim Mastercoy right there makes a great block right there on, on Ken West, you know, one of the defensive ends for Northern Illinois, who's going to have to come in and try to get some pressure. They're, they're going to hope to slow Michigan down. The high school stats on Grady, over 8,400 yards. That's, 
that is not eight-man football. I mean, that's 11 people. <laughs> that's unbelievable, those statistics. And the touchdown number is correct, folks. Straight drop for Henny with time again. Overthrows Mike Hart. That's a tough throw. Very tough throw. I and mean, obviously, you know, Mike Hart only being five foot nine, not the biggest thing. And you see, this is the reason why true freshmen do usually didn't play at Michigan because they couldn't pick up the blitz. But you see Kevin Grady right there making a great, great pickup. And isn't that one of the, the toughest parts it of is. the offense for freshmen, you know, the it's, blocking scheme? It's one thing to come in and be a talented running back and, and or wide receiver, but you really have to understand the offense. You have to be in a situation where you can, you can protect the quarterback when he has to drop back and pass. Tyler Ecker in at tight end now. And he under pressure but steps up nicely, fires it over the middle, and Avant with another catch. Down to the 34 in the first down. Third catch already this afternoon for Jason Avon. You see Chad Henney again with time. You see Jason Avon out here, breaks it on the inside, and he's going against the other Hasbro twin this time. Comes in and just Chad makes a good, makes a makes a good job, does a good job of stepping up into the pocket and releasing the ball. And calmly stepping up into the pocket. I mean, you know, he's, he's got time, and when he doesn't have time and he feels the pocket breaking down, just stepping up and trying to find open receiver rather than running. Double tight end set with one of them. That's a boy in the backfield now. So they have the screen to Hart, bouncing off of one tackler. He broke it down the sideline. Hart to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. Four yards to the end zone, Henny to Hart. This is why you don't hear too many people. We will mention it just for the sake of saying it that Mike Hart is not the biggest guy, but you see him pad level, great balance, great ability when he drops his shoulders and continues to run. And, and that's what he did all last year in the Big Ten. You, you're worried about him coming in. Was he big enough to handle it? Now he's running over defensive line. Rivas on for a line drive, extra point up and good. And Mike Hart might be 5'9 and under 200 pounds, but he just ran over Jason Hutton, who goes about 240 or so. Third catch of the afternoon. This one a touchdown for Hart. Now the offense for Northern Illinois gets their chance. Dr. Pepper kickoff weekend continues. It's a different world when you've got a Hemi. Charger unleashed. Something bold. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. I'm open, I'm open. Julie, I mean you. Take me to Outback for their new Heart of Gold Bronze Filet with sautéed artichokes, sun-dried tomatoes, and a light lemon Alfredo sauce. Yes, I will. Try something bold. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Michigan up 14 to three. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a great example of why my <laughs> card was one of the leading rushers in the nation last year. You watch this play on the screen. Mike Hart's going to come out, slow down right here. Boom, drops his shoulder. That's Jason Hutton right there. He's a guy who's 6'1", 240 pounds. Mike Hart, 5'9", 190. And he may be 5'9", Terry. He piece may tape, be 5'9". Piece of tape that Hutton will not want to review anytime soon. And then had the speed Hart did to break away from everyone. Down to one knee goes A.J. Harris. He'll bring it out to the 20. You just check this out right here. Mike Hart gets a good block out there from Linson, and he breaks up the sideline and just has the explosiveness, not, not only in the beginning running a guy over, but has the explosiveness to finish it. And that was one of the reasons why he said he lost weight. He wanted to be able to take runs. He wanted to have 40, 50-yard runs. So 14 plays on the first drive, just six. And a little more than two minutes off the board on the second drive. The offense, very impressive for Michigan. But at this point, Michigan fans saying, the defense needs to show me something. Absolutely. And then that was a, you know, Jim Herman and all the talk about replacing him. And they come in and hire Steve 
Stripling from Michigan State to try to shake this thing up. Garrett Wolf up to the 23. Chris Graham, a sophomore out of Indianapolis, tripped him up there. As the final seconds of the first quarter, tick off the clock. Michigan, two straight impressive drives and long ones. At least the first one was. Second one, the explosion to Hart. Northern Illinois able to move the ball, though, in, their, in the midst of their second drive. 14-3, you score. ABC Sports presentation of college football. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, you never know when you might encounter a beer without character. That's why we test our recruits for every situation. Tasting less filler, middle light. No, we're not superheroes. More like ministers of culture. Intentional taste man. Character, substance, personal style. A lot of people have great taste and don't even know it. Very. We help them see their potential. Intentional taste mask. Intentional taste mask. Don't cry on me. I teach taste. That's what I do. Character. Nice ride. Thank you, Mocha Coca. Chrysler and Jeep came up on Buku Awards. And Dodge trucks last as long as the Deagle Double Chisel. Plus, I've got the hookup, nephew, for sure. You know, I'm not too sure of what you just said. Now everybody gets a great deal. For shizzle, I can zizzle. This Labor Day weekend, get employee pricing plus on remaining 2005 models. If the ride is more fly, then you must buy. That's what I hear. In three weeks, I will be grounded for incurring massive charges on my parents' cell phone bill. We'll break up after the next billing cycle. Because we don't have mobile-to-mobile -mobile calling. I will be at the mercy of forces larger than myself. I will realize I have no self-control way too late. Don't get schooled in wireless. Get GoPhone. Pay as you go with cash or pick your plan with debit or credit. GoPhone comes with everything but a surprise bill. My GoPhone, unlike my prom date, will prove to be an excellent decision. Only from Singular, raising the bar. season begins Thursday, September 29th, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. That's all I want, ABC 7 News. It's news I can use. They're always on top of it. So I, I never change the channel, it's always Channel 7. They give me exactly the news I want to hear. Know the people, they know the city. It's brilliant. ABC 7 News. People make the difference. Hurricane Katrina. From the rescue and recovery to the impact here at home. Stay with ABC 7 News for continuing coverage. For information on how you can help, log on to abc7chicago.com. Time and Temp brought to you by ComEd and Exelon Company. Phil Horvath, the junior from Naperville, Illinois. Suburban Chicago leads the offense back onto the field for the Huskies, who were 9-3 last year, 7-1 in the MAC. They tied for first in the West with Toledo. Wolf bounces outside, turns the corner with speed. Garrett Wolf across midfield, cuts back, still up. Wolf is gone. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. You know, Terry, we talked about trying to contain Garrett Wolf. Jim Herman had, you know, he said, said it yesterday in our meetings. He said, this is a guy we have a tremendous amount of respect for. He's an explosive guy, a guy we're definitely going to have to contain if we hope to get out of this game with a victory. You see Garrett Wolf stepping inside. He breaks to the left, running behind Doug Free and Ben Lewick, and the best two linemen that they have, and probably, arguably, two of the best linemen in the whole conference. And you see Garrett Wolf down here, his explosive playmaking ability. He breaks outside, then he cuts inside and kind of leaps over a guy and breaks the end zone. 76 yards to the end zone. Mendrick gone for the extra point. Now inside the right upright. But Joe Novak in his 10th year as the head coach for Northern Illinois knows he's got a good one coming back to open up the season. Didn't know how good though it would be here on the road at the big house. But they've kept their composure 
and they're right in this thing. I, I tell you what, you know, this is something that the fans of Michigan definitely did not want to see. You know, all the talk was about improving defensively and trying to minimize big plays. What do you have? A 76-yard touchdown by Garrett Wolf. This is the reason why they hired Steve Stripling over from Michigan State to try to get the defensive line to play better, to try to get more pressure, and in general, just minimize the mistakes by this defense and giving up big plays. And right off the bat, 76-yard touchdown for Garrett Wolf. And look at the longest plays given up by Michigan in 2004, and of course, most talked about in the offseason, all the yards, all the points they gave up in the Rose Bowl to Vince Young in Texas and also to Ohio State, the last two games of the year after the great start. They were beaten early by Notre Dame and then ran the table up until that Ohio State game. Right, and explosive players on both sides made the difference in those games against Michigan. And I, and I know, you know, coming into this game or coming into camp, they knew what they were facing in Northern Illinois. They knew they had a guy named Garrett Wolf, explosive guy with a, a tremendous amount of ability, and you're seeing it right now. Hendrick set to kick, Preston and Arrington back deep for the Wolverines. Short kick, Arrington takes it at the 16. Up to the 29. Adrian Trying to pooch kick it because they, they want to keep it away from Steve Breston. Harrington, the sophomore from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Brings it back out close to the 30-yard line. So now Chad Henney gets another turn. He, Hart and the offense, they've been impressive, but yeah, you don't want to get in this pattern of being in a shootout and having to score every time you got the Yeah, football. you know, on one hand, Joe Nilbeck excited, you know, 76-yard touchdown. And then you look at Chad Henney and Mike Hart are coming out on a football field, so you know you got your hands full. Tab, Avant, and Breston, your three wideouts. Hart, a lone setback. Tough yards up to about the 34. Jason Hutton, the senior from Chicago, who got knocked down by Hart on that touchdown run or pass with the tackle get a look at Mike Hart coming in here on a delayed draw play gonna get it from Chad Henney he's gonna break on the inside and make a cut and you see somebody already at his feet just being able to drive and keep his pad level right there already getting hit and just driving and moving forward and getting the tough yards which you know for a guy his size is impressive the tackle fullback all three of these linebackers starting their first year here for more than Illinois. Smith on the coverage. Carl Tab, no flag. Hear the chorus of boos from the crowd because it was just good, good, good defense on that play. And you know, Chad Henney has time again. He's going to throw it up. They're trying to mix it up here. You know, short inside runs and then give Chad Henney an opportunity to open this up and throw down the field. See Henney with a wristband. And Lloyd Carr with much more of the offense in this year. Matt Gutierrez was to be the starter last year just before the opener. And now Penny as the starter. There's Avant with another catch. He's got four this afternoon. That's a first down, and that one was a little bit behind him. Yeah, Chad, Chad Henney had to step up in the pocket. You know, he had Ken West coming on the outside around. He stepped up and delivered the ball a little bit high, but he threw it to a to Jason Avant, who made a tremendous play. You see Avant coming here, breaking across the middle of the field, and has to go up for it behind his body. Tremendous catch. Avant coming back off the knee surgery, the gain of 13 on that play, and moved the chains, but he did not play in the Rose Bowl. The great kid. We spent some time with him on uh, on Thursday. Kick out, tap the catch. He may have another Michigan first down. Adriel Hansborough on the coverage and eventually the tackle. I know it's going to be tough for this Northern Illinois defensive line, but they've got to find a way, whether it's blitzing or the defensive linemen themselves, to get some pressure on Chad Henney. You cannot allow him just to sit back there and be able to find open receivers and pick pick his way all the way down the football field. Easier said than done against this Michigan Absolutely. offense, though, because you always have to be conscious of the running game and heart. Yes. You can only be so aggressive. Ryan Thompson in at fullback ahead of Hart. And movement along the right side of the line. It looked like big, Reuben Riley may have jumped. Big Reuben Riley a little bit anxious to get another touchdown. Number 72, five-yard penalty, still first down. Todd Gerling's and his crew, his Big Ten crew, 
Working the game in Ann Arbor, and there it is. Yeah, you can look at Ruby Wright jumping off sides. And, you know, and, and <laughs> rightfully so, he's trying to get a leg up because Ken West is in this in this drive in particular has had some really good rushes coming on the outside. Jamal, not bad though. Two minutes into the uh, second quarter, and the first time we've seen that here in the opener. We expect a lot of mistakes, penalties, jitters in the opener. Hard back near the original line of scrimmage. As Ray Smith came up from the strong safety spot Stop to make the tackle. You know, really 43 and counting here in Michigan with the 14 to 10 lead in the second. Yeah, it was a great job by Ray Smith, number 48, the strong safety, because Mike Hart had a, a it was a glimmer of hope right there in the open field and tried to make a move, and Ray was able to tackle him. Second and 11. And a three receiver set, Hart in the backfield as they spread it. And he, over the middle, Avant is fifth catch already, but a strong tackle by Jason Hutton, the senior from Chicago. Jason Hutton jumping up. You can see a little bit more energy from this Northern Illinois football team. They're feeling a little bit better about this game, obviously only being down four points. But, you know, I, I, I find it a little bit interesting. I thought Michigan would try to come out and maybe be a little bit more physical. You know, I know they're having a lot of success dropping back and throwing the ball, but I thought they would try to pound this Northern Illinois defensive line. You know, they outweigh him by, I think, an average of almost 40 pounds. Michigan, a perfect six of six on third down. Third and four coming up here. See if there was contact, the flag. This one knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So we'll see if Northern Illinois came across. Yep. Looks like Keenan Blaylark, the linebacker, jumped across the line prematurely. Offside, number 33 on the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. So that moves the chains. The penalty by Blaylark. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary so far. In the opening moments here of the second quarter, Henny, the quick drop to Avant into the corner of the end zone, the first touchdown. And then over to Mike Hart, who ran over Hutton, going all the way for the second seven on the board for Michigan. Garrett Wolf, 76 yards, running away from all of the Wolverine defenders. And that's where we are right now, 14 to 10. Michigan. So it's second and a long five with 11 09 and counting here in the second. Will Paul, former defensive tackle, now in at fullback. Hart trying to pound it over the right side Hart, ball to the 22. Yeah, you just said it. Will Paul comes into the game and, you know, a guy who was a defensive tackle and Run who are you going to run behind? The guy is, you know, 6'3", 260 pounds, almost 270 pounds, comes in and right away they're going to go behind him. Mentioned this offensive line, they average 6'5 and about 315 pounds in Michigan. There was a time when they wouldn't list anybody over 300 pounds exactly. here, and they got so much over 300 pounds they had to. And he gives it to the freshman, true freshman Kevin Grady, straight ahead for another Kevin first Brady down. Larry English, Richard Freshman out of Aurora, Illinois. Tripped him up there. Don't forget, coming up, the Valvoline Halftime Show. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor coming your way at half. Scores and highlights. Also, a report from ESPN Game Day and the site of the Notre Dame Pittsburgh game tonight. Two new head coaches, Charlie Weiss and uh, Dave Wanstead. Two guys. Yeah, very interesting. Two guys both on a professional level now back in, in college. He's taken over at Notre Dame. Once again, a, just a murderous schedule for the Irish. Weston up top. Can he get there? No. Covered by Alba Hansbrough. The Twins are going to have a lot to talk about after this first quarter. You know, you give Chad Henney again. He's got a lot of time standing back there, and Steve Breston just running a nine route and just barely, just like we saw before on the other side of the football field, again in the corner, just kind of over, overthrows him. Get a look at it right here. Reston stretching out, and he just, just right off his fingertips. Time of possession nearly even. Basically is even. Hart, that's three down to the 12. Hart, 
the ball so here. Hart picking up where he left off last year when he gained over 1,400 yards. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to these two guys right here, uh, Matt Lentz and Ruben Riley. Then you see him, Lentz coming around and making a great block for him, and then the center, Adam Krause, out there leading as well. And just a tough guy. You see three people around Mike Hart. Again, this is a guy that's only 5'9", 190 pounds. 12 carries, 58 yards so far for Hart. And he had the long touchdown catch, too. So it's third and one. Hart. Inside the 10. They should move the chains. Mike Again, Hart running behind carrier. Matt Lentz and Adam Bob Krause and Ruben Riley over there on that right side. Led that time by Will Paul, the big converted defensive lineman. And Will Paul is a guy who obviously is getting some time in his opener, but the coaches speak very highly of in terms of an athlete and making that move from the defensive line to the backfield. He's done it uh, awfully quickly. Yeah, they do. You know, they do speak highly of him, but there was a lot of concern. There's a lot of hype about this Michigan offense, but there was some genuine concern about fullback, uh, full, last year's fullback Kevin Dudley not being here this year. 13th play of the drive. Heading under a little pressure to the corner of the end zone. Contact flag interference. Adriel Hansbro. Hansbro. Again, you get a vaunt on a nine route. And you see him right here. Adriel Hansbro just trying to stay on the inside and coming up on, on a vaunt and just pushing him down and getting caught up with him. And Chad Henney just throws it right over, but he drops him. This going to be a... Number 12. End zone. Just at the two. First down, Michigan. All right, we got the important stuff. Exactly. So Joe Novak, got to be thrilled with the offense and what it's done so far, but they've allowed Michigan to go on long drives here in the first half. You get a look at it right here. Jason Avant coming out and Adriel Hansbro, their feet just getting caught up with each other, and Avant does a great job of reaching for it, make sure he gets it. And first and goal from the two, Hart high into the air and into the end zone. His second touchdown of this opener. There you go. Again, Terry, you got to credit that right side of the line. You see Leo Hennigy pulling, Adam Krause, Matt Lentz, and Ruben Riley all just creating a wall for Mike Hart to just come down and just jump over the top. Jared Rivas on for the extra point. Three-year starter. Has it blocked? And that will go out of the back of the end zone. Quince Holman, number 96, the man who got high into the air to block the extra point. Clint Holman comes. You see Clint Holman right here, coming right up the middle and extends his hand. A new rule this year, you cannot jump or use an opponent to get off the ground, so they create a great penetration where you step in and just put your hand up and stretch out and try to, try to block the kick, and he did a great job of doing it. Did it on sheer strength. 2010, Michigan. Just announced, the Chevy employee discount continues on 05 vehicles and is now available on 06 full-size trucks. From the family of Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The discount price is right on the window. That's the Chevy Total Value Promise. Right now, get a 2006 Tahoe LS two-wheel drive for under $29.5. See your local Chevy dealer today. Sport is sport. A foul's a foul. And a bat's a bat, even if it's flat. 10 feet on the west side is 10 feet on the east side. Football is football, unless it's football. Now, a win's a win, a loss is a loss. But no matter what, you better come with it, because it's 90 feet to first, no matter where home is. FedEx Ground will get these to Cleveland on Wednesday. FedEx, aren't they a little pricey? Ned, you're always wrong. How am I always wrong? OK, let's review. Steely Dan is not one person. We get fringe benefits, not French benefits. James Dean is an actor. Jimmy Dean makes sausage. And you know what, Ned? It's not the Leaning Tower of Pizza. So FedEx isn't too expensive? We don't get French benefits. FedEx Ground. 
Reliability for less than you think. This guy just went to five bowl games in one week. Of course, he forgot his sunscreen for the first two. He lost his voice by the fourth game. And the worst part of all is his girlfriend dumped him when he got back because he didn't tell her he was going in the first place. So tell me, was it worth it? Oh, yeah. Enter to win Cooper Tire's Ultimate Bowl Tour, and you and three friends could be headed to five bowl games in one week on a private jet. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. Who knows? This could be you. Raiders, Patriots, Thursday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. 20 to 10, Michigan with the lead, the number four team in the nation and their home opener. With 8.48 left until halftime, Terry Gannon, Jamal Anderson, and Scott Walker with you from the big house here in Ann Arbor. A.J. Harris watching this sail over his head and out of the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Our Aflac trivia question. During the last 10 years, four Northern Illinois players have been drafted into the NFL. How many Michigan players have been drafted during this time? I'll give you a hint. It's a few more than four. Maybe six, seven. No. You think, right? So we'll give you the Aflac answer in a, a few moments. No problems with the Northern Illinois offense. It's been the defense not able to stop Michigan. And in terms of both teams, five drives, five touchdowns. Neither team has punted so far in the game. Horvath throws. He was hit. Almost picked off. It should have been. Big Gabe Watson in there getting great pressure on Phil Horvath. That was the guy they had questions about. You, know, you read all these articles and stories about him. You go, hey, is this guy going to show up and come to play? And he gets great pressure there. I think Burgess Prescott not... Burgess is outside, and he just, this is the reason why Prescott's on defense and not <laughs> running the ball. The ball hits him right in his hands, and it goes through. May have started to run before he uh, caught that one. So second and 10. Horvath in the offense. Very fortunate. They weren't on the sidelines. Wolf, the lone setback, gets the call on second down. Looks for room. No room to be had. Wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by a couple of tacklers, including Scott McClintock, the senior from Belvern in Pennsylvania. No, in all seriousness, though, the last play, Prescott Burgess was probably, like you said, Terry, probably was excited looking at that big Michigan in the end zone and just didn't focus on catching the ball and went right through his hands. He's going to be a good one, though. I and mean, everybody Absolutely. here on campus pointing out that he may be the next star of that defense. Yeah, which is saying a lot for Michigan linebacker coming in as a junior and his size, got great size, has great range, and, and, you know, they're expecting a lot of things from him coming into this season. Almost 110,000 now on their feet. Horvath hit as he throws, overthrows Sam Hurd, who was well covered by a couple of defenders, including Leon Hall. Yeah, Gabe Watson and the guy Pat Macy, Massey, excuse me, the, deep, the, the captain of this Michigan football team, the other captain, I should say, this Michigan football team, gets great pressure. And this is the stuff that these people wanted to come see. All the conversations about the defense. Is this defensive line going to be able to get pressure? What's Gabe Watson going to do? And you saw an excellent example on that drive. Gabe Watson has two or three great rushes. Pat Massey comes in and has a great rush, and, and now it's three and out. All-time leader and punt return, Steve Breston awaiting the punt. And to get better, first of the game for either team. Preston doesn't get a chance. Rolling out of bounds at the 42-yard line. 38-yard punt, no return. Chad Henney back onto the field when we come back to Ann Arbor. No, I got to tell you, since I've been hurt and missing work, you've been a big help to this family. Ah. No, really. The cash we get from Athlac helps us maintain the house. Put food on the table. And my Jenny continues with her piano lessons. Yep, this family's doing just fine. And it's all thanks to... Aflac. Ask about it at work. All right. Hey, you guys want a Bud Light? Oh, yeah. yeah. my new Bud Light bot. Check this out. It runs entirely on Bud Light. I gotta give me one of those. <laughs> Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Honey, the Bud Light bot's creeping me out again. 
just announced. The Chevy Employee Discount continues on 05 vehicles and is now available on 06 full-size trucks. From the family of Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The discount price is right on the window. That's the Chevy Total Value Promise. Right now, get a 2006 Silverado 1500 regular cab WT for under 16.2. See your local Chevy dealer today. Dr. Pepper College Football Kickoff Weekend on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy. The new Chevrolet's an American Revolution. Aflac, ask about it at work. And IBM, become an on-demand business. IBM can help. State Street here in Ann Arbor, the opening weekend of the college football season. Thanks for hopping all week long here in a great college football town. If you've never been to the big house, you got to make it here for a game. Terry, you want to talk about the pitcher of Potent with seven minutes and 44 seconds. Michigan offense already has 15 first downs in their perfect eight of eight on third down conversions. Haven't been stopped yet. In motion goes Preston on first and 10. Henny with time again behind Preston. He catches it but wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Hard hit by Adriel Hansbrough. Well, trying to replace one of the greats here. Braylon Edwards, who could do this, go high into the air. He had the size, number three pick overall in the NFL draft. Should be a good one on the next one. Oh, absolutely. A guy in 90 catches over 1,300 yards in the Big Ten. Those are phenomenal numbers for a conference that's used to running the football. And he is in attendance today as Henny calls the second time out taken by the Wolverines. Didn't like what he saw on the defense. And we go down to Scott Walker, who is with a special guest, Braylon Edwards. Scott? Absolutely. You know, if we let the student section know we're going, they're going to start yelling Braylon Edwards right now. For the Detroit native, the newest Cleveland Brown, what is the feeling now coming back here to this place that obviously you love and they love you? Just listen to it, man. You know, when every time I walk in the stadium, it's amazing. It's the first time I haven't been in pads. And it's a hard feeling, though. I'm not even wearing a helmet, but I feel good to come home and get the reception that I've got for the fans, so I always love it. Tell me now about the, the players that have replaced you. Jason Avon, Steve Breston just made that catch here. Avon had the touchdown. Are you surprised at all how well they played, or is this just what you've expected seeing them in practice for so many years? That's what I expect from Jason and Steve. They've done that for the last three years. Jason, two for Steve, and they worked hard over the summer. You know, me leaving had no, no effect on them. They knew they had to make plays, and that's what they trained to do. So they're doing exactly what they do in the offseason, which is make plays, work hard, and now it's paying off for them now. Now that you've been through an entire training camp, Coach Carr obviously often tried to make sure that you played your best, sometimes very vocal about it. What is it that Michigan did to prepare you for the NFL? They just taught me the speed of the game. You know, you have to play it in practice. You have to practice well in order to play well in the game. You can't half butt it in practice and come out on the field and do it on game day. So we work hard in practice, and that's how it is in the NFL. And now you guys are doing it here. Terry, back to you. There's one of the guys you just talked about, Jason Avant, with another catch, a big game down to the 33. He beat Alva Hansbrough. No, Terry, this is this is this must be like practice for Chad Henney. I mean, he's sitting back there in the pocket and he has a tremendous amount of time to find receivers. You see him in the play action, set stuff up, and he's just sitting back there and makes one check, two checks, and he catches Jason Avon all the way on the other side of the football field. Gain of 26 and his sixth catch already this afternoon. So from the sideline and the Blitnikoff winner, All-American, down to one of the guys he played with. Avon. Day, and so is Hart finally wrapped up after a gain of one. I know another guy they're going to need to come in this year in addition to Avant and Steve Breeson. They're going to expect big things from Adrian Arrington. He's the third receiver, a guy who's 6'3 and 180 pounds, 190 pounds himself. So I think as a trio, these Michigan guys definitely feel like they're going to be able to come in and reproduce the production that Braylon Edwards gave him last year. Yeah, Arrington, just a sophomore, and he's the high school player of the year in Iowa. He's from Cedar Rapids. Great speed. Passer boy, tight end in motion. Here comes Park as it takes, tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Good tackle by Adriel Hansbro. Gave it the Aflac trivia question a few moments Adriel ago. Hansbrough. The last 10 years, four Husky players been drafted in the NFL. How many Michigan players have been drafted during this time? Did you see the answer, or do you want to take a guess? I'll guess. I think in the last 10 years, I'd say Michigan probably has 
38, 40. Not bad. Even better. 47 over the last decade from Michigan. Drafted by the NFL. David Boss, great All-American center for the San Francisco this year. Henny again with a world of time to the end zone. Incomplete. He was out. Preston yeah. hauled it in, but he didn't stay in. You know, at the last second, he got a little bit of pressure there, and I think that's the reason why he overthrew the ball. I know he was seeing Steve Breston run up the sideline basically wide open, and he just kind of overthrows him. Breston catches it, but it's out of bounds. Had that initial foot right on the line. No chance. So Garrett Revis, who had his last extra point blocked, he comes on for a 48-yard try. He had a 47 long last year. So this is one yard longer than his longest field goal in 2004. And not even close. You know, I'll tell you what, Terry, you know, he is looking at the, the, dif the defensive line for Northern Illinois. They had three or four guys breaking through on that play again to try to block the kick. Little momentum for the Huskies. Would you kindly tell me what you're doing in the road? I'm with the help desk. You're lost. You're headed to Fresno. Fresno, right. This is the road to Albuquerque. How'd you know we were lost? The boxes told me. The boxes? RFID radio tags on the cargo. Helps track shipments. The boxes knew we were lost. Maybe the boxes should drive. Very funny. Just announced, the Chevy employee discount continues on 05 vehicles and is now available on 06 full-size trucks. From the family of Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The discount price is right on the window. That's the Chevy Total Value Promise. Right now, get a 2006 Tahoe LS two-wheel drive for under $29.5. See your local Chevy dealer today. Nice. Very nice. Do you think they're... Oh, yeah. They're plastic. And they're spectacular. Now's the time to grab a Coors Light cooler box. 18 16-ounce plastic bottles that stay colder longer. Ice it up for Labor Day. The Coors Light cooler box. Wow. Close up, they look even bigger. Lost. The new season premieres Wednesday, September 21st, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. One of the great institutions of learning in America, Michigan. And this is how you spend your Saturdays. Just up like that. A moment ago, Adrian Arrington was injured on that last play, and they just carted him off with a bag of ice around his right ankle. Yeah, we just talked about how he was going to be a big factor in trying to replace some, you know, pick up the production slack where Braylon Edwards left last year and he was already out the game. So we'll get a report on him from Scott a little bit. He's running that down with info. A.J. Harris in the backfield to start this set. Gain over the left side, close to the 40-yard line. His backfield mate, Garrett Wolf already has 100 yards rushing in the game. Yeah, you look at the statistics of these two guys coming into this season, you know, 2004, 256 carries and 1,600 yards, and then A.J. Harris, 174 carries and 822 yards. They combined for over 2,400 yards rushing and 20, over 20 touchdowns, 22 touchdowns. The Huskies with 126 yards on the ground in the game. We'll throw across midfield and a solid catch. Knocked out of bounds. Chatone Powers, the senior from Broadview, Illinois, hauling it in. There's a penalty marker back at the 30. There is a flag on the play. And a late hit. A personal foul against Michigan. Looks like that late hit is going to go against Lamar Woodley. Number 56 at the defense. Hand to the head. We had a completed pass. The penalty will be added after the catch. Automatic first down. 
A little bit of frustration there, you know, in this Michigan defense trying to do, trying to get as much pressure as they can on Phil Horvath. They don't want him to sit back there and be able to relax. And, and obviously Lamar Woodley coming in late and hitting him in, in the head. This is an offense that averaged about 35 points a game last year. Mostly the one back set. It's working again on the road here in Ann Arbor. Don't forget at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. First and 10 at the 31. Look out for Davis. There goes the blitz. Great pickup. Here comes Wolf. Inside the 20, inside the 15, he lost the football at the end. But may have gotten him back. We'll see. Trying to sort things out. Horvath thinks he still has it. Either way, now Michigan's got the football. Horvath drops back here and gets up under pressure of Prescott Burgess and just kind of dumps it inside. The Wolf, who on his way down, just gets tackled from the back and stripped. Like Brandon, Brandon Engelman. Engelman. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he never had a chance to get it back. And they, well, how well did they pick up that blitz, too? Yeah. Pretty play. Yeah, absolutely. It was designed. It's like a shovel pass designed to let him come out on the inside and just kind of dump it inside so the whole middle was opened up for Gary Wolf. So the Wolf fumble gives it back to a Michigan offense, which has not been stopped. Uh, they missed a field goal on the last drive, but that's been it. Hart out to the 20. Solid gain of six, maybe seven on first down. Don't forget, Dr. Pepper College football kickoff weekend on ABC. Continues tonight. You got Charlie Weiss of the Fighting Irish taking on Dave Wanstead and Pittsburgh. Two debuts there. Number 23, Pittsburgh at home. Also, Texas A&M battling Clemson. Some of you will see that from Death Valley tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC as we kick off the college football weekend in a big, big way. Tim Massacoy, his third catch of the afternoon, has a first down for the Wolverines. Yeah, and, you know, we talked to Terry Malone, the offensive coordinator of Michigan, and he said his job is not to try to satisfy all of these talented players he has, but he knows that on any given play, if it's not if it's not Tim Massacoy here, it could be Tyler Ecker at tight end. If it's not Jason Avant, it's going to be Steve Breston. He has so many different weapons. You know, this in his mind, this could be one of the most potent offenses the University of Michigan has ever had, and that's saying a lot. A lot of ways they can beat you. Five different receivers have caught passes already today. Slips through one to the 25, wrapped up by a couple of Huskies, including Jason Hutton. Get a look right here at Jason Avant. Misses the block right there. He's working, he's working, he's frustrated, which is good to see for a wide receiver. Yeah. One of the captains. And his name is often mispronounced. In fact, uh, some of the coaches here call him Avon. <laughs> we asked him, what is it? Is it Avon? Is it Avon? He said, I don't really care. So what does your mother call your last name? Oh, she doesn't care either. <laughs> so, okay. Complete to the far sideline. Up at the 44, there is Avon on cue with another big catch. I know Before he, he stepped out. Yeah, I know he's frustrated because he had nothing but open field in front of him. And he tried to turn turned around to make the catch there, but if he would have been able to keep his feet in bounds and maybe swivel the other direction, you see him trying to spin and stay in bounds, but momentum took him out. He had nothing in front of him. Well, he's got seven catches for 104 yards already this afternoon. If you're wondering how much they'll miss, Raylan Edwards. Well, they have the answer already. Play action. Henny again with time going deep. Preston's there. Double covered. And incomplete. That's a dangerous one right there. You know, Steve Breston is out there and uh, free safety just sitting back there. Wait, excuse me, Steve Breston's out there. He breaks it up the field. And if it was a situation where it would have been one on one, I could see you trying to make this throw. But uh, Ray Smith was back there deep, just waiting for him to throw it. 
Yeah, Smith, the strong safety, and a senior from Crown Point, Indiana, coming over to read it nicely. Really the anchor of the secondary. Guy who's been in that starting lineup for three years now. Denny Dornbo is the defensive coordinator. And for Joe Novak, second and ten, Wolverines. And he's going to tuck it, run, slide across the 45 to the 46. It'll be third and long. Third and long. We're getting inside a two-minute. Michigan has to make a decision here what they're going to do. Either go into a two-minute offense or just or just try to down and get out of this first half. You got an offense like this. I know what I'd do. Yeah, you know, you're in a two-minute drill. This is a great opportunity to run it. You're in midfield. You're not far from field goal range right now, and you have all the weapons that you have offensively. And through the entire first half, I don't think Henny's been under pressure once. Eight and nine on third down. Here comes the pressure this time. Well, they missed him. Henny gets it away and overthrows Ecker, the tight end. Almost on cue, like somebody from Northern Illinois is listening yeah. to us. Ken West came around the end. That's what Northern Illinois is going to have to do to try to mix it up. Obviously, they're not getting a tremendous amount of pressure with their defensive linemen, so they're going to have to try to throw some blitzes at Chad Henny just to throw him off of his game because he's just sitting back there with all the time. Ross Ryan, the senior from Franklin, Michigan, on and back deep. The Tone Powers is the Tone Powers. In Illinois. At his own 10. Michigan does punt the football. First punt of the afternoon. Powers lost the football. Still loose. Still loose. They'll sort it out. The ball at the 13. Michigan football. You never want to see a guy inside the 20-yard line trying to do anything cute with the ball on a punt. You know, when you're in this situation in the game, you know, you're under a little bit of pressure. You're looking at him right here. Is there, there's not a guy right in front of him, but when you're that deep in your own territory, you always want to try to be safe with the football and maybe fair catch it. How about Ross Ryan, the punter, scrambling down there to get it? He's the one that recovered it. And a solid hit initially by Darnell Hood. So the second straight turnover, second straight fumble, powers the man this time. Last time it was Wolf. And Lloyd Carr's team handed a gift with a minute 25 until the break. Just getting a two tight end set. Hart behind a lead blocker. Dances inside. Fights down to the five. Northern Illinois had to know what was coming. When you see Tyler Ecker and Tim Massacoy both in the game at the same time in a two tight end split, you know Michigan is going to try to run the football. You get a look at Mike Hart right here. Great lead block there by Brian Thompson. Cuts inside of that and just continues to drive. Mike Hart, 18 carries, 78 yards here in the first half. And don't forget the touchdown catch as well. Second and two. Why oh, not give it back to Hart? Spins down to the wall. The most impressive thing about Mike, you know, he's coming as he's coming out of the game right now, is not just, you know, what he did last year. You look at his vision, his toughness, and his overall ability and how quick he is when it comes time to make the initial move. That's the big difference between some good running backs and great running backs. He can make a move in such a tight spot and, and explode so much faster than most guys can normally. Gets a rest right now on first and goal. The true freshman Kevin Grady in there. Brian Thompson, the fullback. Grady is first touchdown ever here in Ann Arbor. The first of many, no doubt. So the freshman from East Grand Rapids High School, high into the air for the touchdown, and Hart, the man that got them there. But the two turnovers, if you're Joe Novak, you look at this first half and you say, we stayed right with Michigan, and then we coughed it up twice. Absolutely, and you're coughing up, and you're coughing up the ball one time when you are going in to score, then you cough up the ball trying to, trying to run the clock out on Michigan. Rivas had one blocked, and he missed the field goal. This one up and good. And number four, Michigan at home, rolling right now. 27 to 10 with 27 seconds until half. 
At Samuel Adams, we do 10,000 beer audits in the course of the year. We test the temperature. We look at the color. Bartenders think we're crazy. They're just looking at the head, looking at everything, and I don't know what they're looking for. We check the lines and the faucets, and we also go and check Sam Adams' keg dates downstairs. If it's not fresh, we buy it back. When we have festivals here, we put out-of-code beer in the tank. People try to throw a ball and dunk him in some old Sam Adams. I'd rather put people into stale beer than stale beer into people. Well, it wasn't until Hurricane Charlie was over that the real danger began. I'm State Farm Agent Dan Mann, and this is a true story. I'm a diabetic, and so when the power goes out, that's real bad. His insulin had to stay cold. He brought me ice. Plus a check for emergency living expenses. Before my neighbor even heard from his insurance company, and with all the thousands of people that needed help down here, I felt like they're only one. When you need someone most, nobody takes care of you like State Farm. We'd love to prove it to you. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. NIU, serving the heart of America's heartland. Educating new leaders for the nation's third largest region. Bringing expertise and innovation to communities and public schools. Creating new jobs and new workers. Conducting research that improves our quality of life. Northern Illinois University. Across the region, from Chicago to the Mississippi, NIU works. Joe Novak shaking his head right now because possible two touchdown swing just a moment ago. It was 20 to 10, and Northern Illinois driving. Wolf coughs it up. Michigan gets it back. They punt it. Chatelle Powers fumbles the punt, and the Wolverines get seven more on the board. Jamar Adams. Yeah, and that's the thing. You you just tuning into this game or you're watching this game. It's yes, yeah, 27 10, and it looks like Michigan is rolling, but this game is actually a lot closer than the scoreboard dictates. Absolutely. AJ Harris to one knee. They'll bring it out to the 20 with 27 seconds left until halftime and until we take you to the Valvoline halftime show. Horvath has been awfully impressive running this offense in the first half. I mean, the offense, except the fumble by Wolf, that's it. Other than that, Joe Novak's offense has done great against the Michigan defense that probably are doubting themselves a little bit now. Again. Absolutely. You know, this is the type of offense that Michigan had so much trouble with last year. You hear it all the time with this spread offense and this offense with guys who are so talented in different positions. You know, Northern Illinois has a good set of receivers, two great running backs, and a quarterback who's confident. So Horvath takes a knee. And they'll head to the locker room as Michigan has the 27 to 10 halftime lead. Garrett Wolf with 100 yards in the first half, but Mike Hart has 83. And get on to Scott Walker, who's with Lloyd Carr. Coach, a big lead for you right now against this game, but Northern Illinois has kept it close for a while. Are you surprised at how they played in the first half, and how do you think your team has? Well, I'm not surprised at all. I'm, I'm very disappointed in the big play, but. Um, you know, hopefully we can get that straightened around. I think we're doing some good things. We're doing, we're getting good pressure on the quarterback, and offensively we're executing awfully well. Do you feel that your defense then is making progress despite that big play? I know that's a question mark in your team. Ask me that after the game. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Coach. Thanks. Yeah, they gave up the big play, Garrett, the 76 to yarder to Garrett Wolf to the end zone, but uh, making big plays on offense as well. 27 to 10, your halftime score. Stay tuned for John Craig and Aaron Belvin halftime show. Right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Just announced, the Chevy employee discount continues on 05 vehicles and is now available on 06 full-size trucks. From the family of Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, the discount price is right on the window. That's the Chevy total value promise. Right now, get a 2006 Silverado 1500 regular cab WT for under 16.2. See your local Chevy dealer today. Sure, we had a good time pillaging. But with so many people switching to Capital One, we've had to find new jobs. Maybe a seven and a half. Ah! Oh. Oh. It's been especially tough on Ivan the Great. For low rates and great rewards, switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? What are you looking at? I don't know why I'm not over the edge. Let's rock! Well, I'm better than y'all. Ready 
to call the cops. I call all the shots. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. Fullness from a value menu. Please, please, thank you. I have an announcement. I'm full! Taco Bell's Big Bell Value Menu, featuring the half pound beef combo burrito with double the beef. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the bun. Gina Davis is Commander-in-Chief. Premieres Tuesday, September 27th, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Hurricane Katrina has left a path of destruction and countless victims in its wake. Join ABC7 in helping the American Red Cross provide relief to the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW or visit abc7chicago.com and make a contribution. Jose Sanders and Judy Sue, weekday mornings at 5. Big weekend of college football continues tomorrow here on ABC at 1.30 Eastern Time. West Virginia facing Syracuse. That is on Sunday. Time now for our no huddle highlights. In Tennessee, the volunteers, a team I thought would make a lot of noise this year. They didn't make much today. Eric Ainge goes four yards to Chris Hannon, and their lead over UAB is just 10 to 3. And then Rick Lawson has a touchdown pass as well, but two quarterbacks. You have two quarterbacks that played. They flipped back and forth. The question going into the season whether or not they had two. But today, you really have to wonder who's the quarterback going to step up for the Volunteers. Ohio State against Miami of Ohio. Josh Betts is sacked by A.J. Hawk. It's 10-0 at that point in the game for Ohio State. And then Betts is intercepted by Dante Whitner. This defense stifled Miami of Ohio. It was very quick. It was poised. We all knew that they'd have a good defense going into the season. The offense spread the ball around today. Ted Ginn getting the ball all over the field. And I thought they did a nice job. Third string quarterback Todd Beckman here. 43 yards of Ted Ginn Jr. And they get the easy win. Ball State facing Iowa. You want to talk about easy Drew Tate. 33 yards on this touchdown. If there ever was an example of how one team dominated another, it was the Iowa Hawkeyes today. Three different quarterbacks through a pass. Only one incompletion between those three. Amazing. Bowling Green in Wisconsin. It was all Bowling Green early, but then Brian Calhoun takes over. Woo! <laughs> Brian Calhoun. Man, this dude, five touchdowns. The best debut by a running back. 43 rushes, 258 yards today. No other Wisconsin back, and they've had some good ones. Has ever had a debut like that, man? This dude can run the football. A Milwaukee native went to Colorado, mm -hmm. transferred back to uh, Wisconsin. Let's go back to that Tennessee Volunteer game against UAB. Again, it's the first game of the year, but you don't like this switching back, back and forth between quarterbacks. No, I don't, John. It's very, very disruptive as, as a player working in the media or on the field, especially. You have different cadence, you have different snap counts, there's different rhythms. When you're flipping back and forth between two different coaches, or excuse me, two different quarterbacks, it really kind of throws you off. It's very hard as a player to concentrate on that, and I think it showed because I expected more out of the Volunteers well, today. You know, look back to, uh, to 2004. Tennessee led the nation in wins with less than seven points, seven points or less, and that was six of them, six times. So they played close games. This isn't like a team that blows people out. I thought what I was looking for today was a team that would come out here and dominate on the ground. I thought Riggs would run for 200 yards. He didn't get it done. He had 110 yards, but it wasn't impressive. 100 something yards. I didn't think Tennessee dominated him. It seemed like they said it was Angel's job before the game, but they didn't play it that way. We'll continue with ABC's College Football in a moment. The Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline Max Life Motor Oil, engineered to help extend the life of your car. I've got three studios in my house. This is where I do the watercolors. Out here, I like to work with acrylic. This is where I do my airbrushing. Here's where I work with oils. I put Max Life in there, and from one change to the next, you don't have to add any oil. No more leaks. This artwork's now for sale. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. 
Since 1978, the Hawaii Iron Man's 140-mile human blast furnace has scorched the circuitry of the world's fittest athletes, like pro triathlete Chris Lee. In the 97 race, I was so dehydrated, my body just shut down with 50 meters left. Six years of setbacks landed Chris at the Gatorade Sports Science Institute. With a new hydration strategy in hand, Chris snapped the tape at the 2004 Ironman Portal Link. I guess his stuff works. And that's the stuff of legends. Big Ten football is a special tradition. More than five and a half million fans pack our stadiums each year, making Big Ten football what it is today. So respect the game and show good sportsmanship because the Big Ten sets an example for everyone to follow. Before, during, and after the game. Big Ten football. Good sports make great fans. to the Valvoline halftime show. The Michigan Wolverines right now with a halftime lead, but precarious because it's really the turnovers. That means, that means they're lucky? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. You know. It's on the edge. Something they're like fortunate that. somewhere, those words. Well, you know, Northern Illinois is going to you know, be really mad at themselves when they look at the film on this team because they come in here and with the turnovers that they've had, you can't do that against Michigan. Michigan's way too good for that to happen. But I got to tell you what, Aaron, you know, old Chad Henney showed up again this year, didn't he? No sophomore slump for these guys. Chad Henney having a great day. He saw Michael Hart do some wonderful things out of the backfield, catching that ball on a screen pass. But it's the defense, Michigan's defense. Their nemesis last year was their ability to stop the run, especially against mobile quarterback. We saw Garrett Wolf today having kind of his way as that he will with that Michigan defense. So it's going to be that that will tell the test over time on how the Wolverines are going to do. One of the things that separates college football from any other sport is we wait for that upset and who's going to be the first team and the highest ranked team to fall. It did not take long because it happened today. Number seven, Oklahoma facing TCU. Bob Stoops had to be concerned about replacing Jason White. Adrian Peterson was terrible in the first half. They hardly gave him the ball, but he does get a touchdown run here of 11 yards. But then Rhett Bomar fumbles the ball and TCU recovers. TCU's defense stayed strong at the line of scrimmage. Both sides of the line of scrimmage all day. Oklahoma tried to come out in the second half, but they just couldn't quite get it done. Yeah, they take the little toss here. Robert Merrill. Two yards in for the touchdown, and TCU has a lead at 17 to 10. And this time, Paul Thompson at quarterback, he gets sacked. This is the highest ranked team that TCU has beaten since Baylor in 1960. So, what did we find out today? Jason White obviously will be missed because these two young quarterbacks did not look good. But he's not the only one, guys, that's going to be missed. I think their offensive line that they had from mm -hmm. last year is going to be missed as well, as well as those receivers. It was clear to me today that the offensive line for Oklahoma couldn't get it done. You saw those last couple highlights that we saw. There was pressure in the quarterback's face, led to a fumble, sack. All those things, Adrian Peterson not having a great day on the ground, all of that starts up front. And what I didn't see was Oklahoma being able to take control of the line of scrimmage. I think it was a total team effort today, but it was led by the, the rebuilt offensive line. And Gary Patterson and his coaching staff, the great job mm -hmm. that they did to get them ready. But you can't write off Oklahoma. Don't make that mistake. Oklahoma will still be a dangerous football team. These are talented guys out there. And so for them, the sense of urgency is week one. Now they've got to go out there and they've got to prepare when they get back to practice that they've got to start over again or else this season will be a long one for them because they're in the Big 12 South and there are a lot of football games yep. they have left. Peterson had just 63 yards and it's mm -hmm. their first loss to an unranked team since 2002. Then that was Oklahoma State. Now Boston College now in the ACC this year facing BYU this afternoon. Quentin Porter is the quarterback he goes 14 yards to Chris Miller Quentin Porter you gotta like a lot of eyes on this guy today you gotta like the confidence that you get coming out early throwing a touchdown pass right out of the gate not a whole lot of offense going on in this game but BYU historically plays well in their home opener Washington and Air Force Tyrone Willingham from Ooh. Notre Dame to Washington they expect a lot Sean Carney here fumbles Goldson recovers it sets up a field goal 
And at halftime, they are tied at three. Coach Ty looked good in that uniform over there. In different colors, looks strong. Doesn't like that Ty has a tie right now, though. South Florida facing Joe Paw. The questions continue. Courtney Denson recovered by Darian Hardy for a 16-yard touchdown. Penn State actually looking very good against <laughs> South Florida, who's in their first year in the Big East. But, but again, the questions come back. And, and I'm on so many talk shows and radio shows, I know, as you guys are, and everybody asks the question, is it time for Joe Pa to go? I still am in that corner that says it's time to go when he says. I'm glad we talk. We never do radio shows because he's always doing them all he for us. All. But other than that, <laughs> you know, Joe Paterno, from what I hear, he's going to stay around for three more years. He told a prominent coach and a friend of his that he says, hey, I'm around for three more seasons. He's still recruiting and he has players. He has a lot of leadership on this team with juniors and seniors. So if he's going to turn around, this is the season. South Florida, he's supposed to be out there smacking them around. I mean, he can't afford to let up on somebody like this. Let's call a spade a spade, guys. 343 wins. This is his 40-6 season without Joe Paterno there would be no Penn State football I think there's something to be said about that a lot of naysayers but this guy's returning 18 starters nine of which are coming back from a defense that was 10th in the country last year it's going to be very interesting to see what the Joe to see what the Joe Pa must go those people are saying when these guys go 3-0 and at Northwestern you know those people that are saying that are forgetting not that just what he's done on the sidelines as a coach but this guy has contributed millions of dollars to that university he has bought his time there. Ted Henney to Michael Hart. The Super Softs hook up, and Michigan leads 27-10. During the week, I work in the shop, working on cars. Uh, on the weekend, we come out here, I uh, wind up working on race cars. Here he comes. There he goes. This is what I drive to the desert. This engine used to smoke when I started it up. Max Life Oil greatly reduced that smoke. 198,000 miles, still going. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. I believe in miracles. Where are you from? You sex a thing, sex a thing, you. Fall in love with the rich, bold flavor, Dr. Pepper. One taste, and you get it. This summer, Dr. Pepper is giving away one Mini Cooper convertible a day for 75 days. Just pop open any specially marked Dr. Pepper product, then log on to drpepper.com to see if you've won. The Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline Max Life Motor Oil, engineered to help extend the life of your car. President's massive stroke. The 25th Amendment would kick in. The vice president assumes the presidency. Why do you want to be president? The answer is that you want the power to control the universe. That's not me. Well, that's the problem. People who don't want power have no idea how to use it when they have it. I want you to resign. I'm going to run this government. Oscar winner Gina Davis, Emmy winner Donald Sutherland. Commander-in-Chief premieres Tuesday, September 27th, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Coming up tonight in prime time at 8 o'clock, some of you will see Texas A&M face Clemson. Others will get to see the debuts of two new head coaches. Notre Dame taking on Pittsburgh, Charlie Weiss for the Irish, and for Pitt, former player and former NFL coach Dave Wanstatt. How do you think, you know, former Irish guy right now, nice. how do you think Charlie Weiss does? I think Charlie Weiss is going to do okay, but for him to do that, they're going to have to play well on defense, especially in the backfield. Pittsburgh has a very good quarterback in Tyler Palco and his number one receiver is Greg Lee. That is going to seriously test the Irish secondary. So it's going to be a test. It'll be interesting to see tonight and for the rest of the year how that Irish secondary hems up. Speaking of tests, we got a test for you this season. What's it? <laughs> Weekly, just, well, you never know, we're going to slide it through. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Texas A&M. You know, you talk about Texas A&M. And this is a football team some consider as a dark horse to win the Big 12. Not just the Big 12 South, but the Big 12. Reggie McNeil is a quarterback that will make an impact on this football team this year. When he doesn't make mistakes, the Aggies are hard to beat. Their offensive line is solid. Courtney Lewis, the running back, is healthy, so they're going to be okay with him. All right, those games coming up at 8 o'clock Eastern time. But right now it's time to go to ABC News and Dan Harris with the latest on Hurricane Katrina. Good afternoon, I'm Dan Harris in New York. The Homeland Security Secretary now describes the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina as probably the worst catastrophe in this nation's history. The governor of Louisiana believes thousands are dead in her state alone. 
In New Orleans, evacuations continue for the thousands still trapped six days after the storm, many of them at the convention center and Superdome. Other people stranded in their homes are getting food and water dropped from military helicopters, and rescue boats are now patrolling flooded streets. President Bush will return to the Gulf Coast on Monday. This morning, he ordered an additional 7,000 active duty troops to the region, and refugees from the storm are beginning to overwhelm other areas as well. Houston's Astrodome is full, and Dallas is warning that within hours, they'll have more people than they can manage. Stay with ABC News for updates throughout the day and a full report on World News Tonight. ABC 7 News. People make the difference. Honey, what's wrong? I don't know. All of a sudden, I feel really, really sad. Looks like the Chrysler Group has done it again. They have their most award-winning and freshest lineup ever. They have 12 vehicles with five-star frontal crash test ratings. And their vehicles are projected to retain their value better than GM or Ford. You know what's missing? A great deal. Get employee pricing plus and remaining 2005 Chrysler Jeep or Dodge models. It's like you always used to say, Grandpa. If you can find a better car, buy it. That's my girl. Hurricane Katrina. From the rescue and recovery to the impact here at home. Stay with ABC 7 News for continuing coverage. For information on how you can help, log on to abc7chicago.com. A new Robert Redford, Jennifer Lopez drama tonight at 1035. Number four, Michigan up 27 to 10. Here is, we are just a few moments away from the opening moments of the third quarter Northern Illinois head coach Joe Novak stopped by to talk to Scott Walker just a moment ago Michigan up to 27 to 10 here's Northern Illinois North coach Joe Novak and coach tell me what you told this team in the locker room after having some turnovers that really cost you late in the first half really, yeah, that was a 14 point swing there we're going in hopefully to score that we fumble it we stop them we fumble they give them a touchdown on there it's a 14 point swing we're really hurting ourselves we had a critical third down offside on defense that kept the drive alive so really what we've done is really hurt ourselves you can't do that against anybody much less a good team like Michigan. coach thank you Terry will send it back to you <laughs> all right Scott two fumbles late in the first half that's what he's referring to Garrett Wolf had one of those after a big game they were threatening he also had a 76 yard touchdown run and a hundred yards total in the first half on the ground. So Michigan to kick off to open up the second half. A.J. Harris back seven yards deep to one knee and they'll bring it out to the 20 for the first series 
of the second for the Huskies. And here are the two turnovers, Jamal. That really hurt the Huskies. No, absolutely, because this team has been driving all day. And you see Garrett Wolf right here. It looked like they were going to go in. He gets tackled, and he fumbles the ball. And they were in great field position to score. And then right at the end of the first half, you see another drop of the punt, of the punt right there. Another turnover for Michigan. Yeah, the score is 27 to 10, but this game should be and probably easily could be a 17 to 20 game. Yeah, it was 20 to 10 at that point. Phil Horvat, the junior who only started three games last year. He's 8 of 11 for 81 yards so far in this one. Wolf gets the call on first down on the 28 yard line as we check out our Pacific Life game summary. The first half stats. 289 yards total for Michigan. And look at the time of possession over 20 minutes on the clock for the Wolverines. Two turnovers at the bottom. Really the telling statistic in the first half. Because Northern Illinois, make no mistake about it, they have moved the football against this Michigan defense. Yeah, absolutely. And Jim Herman will tell you, he knew he was going to have some trouble trying to slow this offense down. And especially this guy right here, Gary Wolf. He came in with a game plan of trying to contain him. Obviously, they haven't been successful doing that and trying to make Phil Horvath throw the ball. But they've Northern Illinois has been able to do whatever they wanted to offensively. Wolf will move the chains for the Huskies. The top duos where they rated Wolf and A.J. Harris is back up with over 2,400 yards. Fourth in the nation and the top returning duo in college football this year. Those are just incredible numbers. Obviously, you know, Garrett Wolf, 1,600 yards, and then a backup, A.J. Harris, having 800 yards in himself. Or that, the straight drop. Now on the run, it's hit hard. Complete, though, near a first down. Chatone Powers, the man who fumbled and allowed that touchdown in the closing moments of the first half, and he was drilled by Brandon Engelman. Yeah, you get a look at Lamar Woodley right here at the top of your screen. He's going to come around here, avoid the running back, A.J., and make a big hit on Phil Horvath, but Phil still was able to deliver the pass to Chaton. About a yard shy of a first down. Big key on that play right there, Terry, is Lamar's hands were down, making sure not to hit him in the head and get another penalty. A.J. Harris, the long setback. Here he is, straight ahead. He's got a first down across midfield and fights his way to the Michigan 46 before Scott McClintock, inside linebacker, tripped him up. You're watching the success that these guys are having, particularly on the left top, left side of that football. Uh, Doug Free and Ben Lewick, two guys who Jim Herman said could play anywhere in the Big Ten. He said these aren't just good linemen for Northern Illinois. These are two of the best linemen we're going to face all year. And obviously, they're having success on that left side running against Michigan. Gain of nine. The 11th first down for this Northern Illinois offense. Wolf this time bounces out, looks for room, turns the corner. Driven out at the 38 of Michigan. Leon Hall rode him out of bounds there. You know, Lamar Woodley had a great move to come back on the inside on Doug Free. You, you're watching right here. Lamar Woodley's going to come around here and get inside. And watch Garrett Wolf just sidestep. Really quick breakout. And that's just so dangerous about him. As soon as you think you got him, I'm either you can't see him or he just makes a move like that and was able to pick up eight yards. Gain of eight. He's got 124 in the game. That's how he scored his touchdown. Absolutely. 76-yard run bouncing out. Second and two. Quick drop. Quick throw over the middle. Caught inside the 20 and down to the 19. Jake Nordine, the tight end with his first catch of the afternoon. We're going to, look, we're going to get a look at this play here, Terry. From the end zone, you see Jake Nordine right here. He's lined up right over Lamar Willie's over. He goes on the inside. And you see Scott McClintock, the linebacker. Great pass by Phil Horvath to throw it over the linebacker, and, and, and Nordine makes a great catch going up for it. You heard Lloyd Carr at the end of the first half tell Scott Walker to put some pressure on Phil Horvath, but not in this drive. Penalty marker down as Wolf is tripped up at the 17. They bring it back, though. John on the hold, they will. Had a pretty good season opener for both of these teams in terms of avoiding penalties. Holding offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. 
Fouls on number 65 on the offense. Repeat. This weekend we got football and golf coming your way from Boston. Tiger Woods heading the field at the Deutsche Bank Championship. Third round coverage at 5 Eastern tomorrow. Then it ends on Monday, Labor Day. Final round begins at 3 Eastern right here on ABC Sports. Tiger with a 65 on day one. But Jeff Rijo now sharing the lead with Olin Brown at 9 under. Last year, P.J. Seen take on the one Tiger at the Deutsche Bank. Down inside the 20 to the 18, Britt Davis, the redshirt freshman who's also a backup quarterback with a catch. John Bond, the offensive coordinator for Northern Illinois, is doing a great job. You see Britt Davis out here. This guy is a corner, a quarterback normally out there making a catch. He's a guy who helped push Phil Horvath to work to the position he is being the starting quarterback. He was in a tight race with him throughout all of training camp to be the starting quarterback, but they said he's just too talented to keep off of the field. A.J. Harris in the backfield. Horvath on the run. Throws it away. On purpose. Tone Powers was there, but well covered by Leon Hall. Yeah, Phil Horvath has been under a little bit of pressure. Now you see John Bond moving him around, moving him out of the pocket, getting him in a situation where he's rolling out. And then again, Bond, to his credit, he's doing a great job of mixing things up. You see A.J. Harris coming in. You see Britt Davis coming in at wide receiver. And then just mixing up with the run and the pass and keeping Michigan off balance. He said, you know, he doesn't believe the hype about this Michigan defense being weak. He felt like their defensive line was strong. He has a lot of respect for it, but he also knows he has a lot of weapons on his side football big third down for both the Husky offense and the Wolverine defense or that play action goes to the end zone throws this one away though no one there yeah, there was no options for Phil Horvath to do the smart thing, throw it out of bounds. But I think because of moving him around the pocket, you see him in a simple setback, a drop back in that situation, and he wasn't under a tremendous lot of, uh, wasn't under a tremendous amount of pressure. Looks like the route run by Powers may have been stopped. Either he stopped it or he just ran into something. So Chris Nendrick on. They'll place it down at the 25. A 35-yard field goal try. of 21 last year and it's blocked scramble and picked up falling on at the 24 John Thompson number 49 may have been the man to get up and get a piece of that one yeah I brought this up earlier when the Northern Illinois defender blocked the ball you cannot any longer jump on the back of guys so you see this tremendous push in the middle from guys who can't use their teammates to get up they're just pushing here to try to break into the middle and get their hands up right in the path of the kick and Thompson was the man the red shirt freshman from Detroit who blocked the field goal the Wolverines take over when we come back New styles. Wrangler Jeans Company. A new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new styles. I'd like to redeem my credit card miles to Miami. No, locked out. Ooh, you sound strong. Please? No. Just for me. Okay. The answer's always no. Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, anytime. Should have worked at Capital One. Oh, what's in your wallet? Is this the help desk? Yes, it is. We need help. With what? It's, it's always the help desk. I understand. I Farmer, designer, weaver, buyer, shipper, seller. Yeah, hey, what do you got? You need a customized, integrated, real-time web portal. A what? what? to get you on the same page. Perfect. Who are you? Shepard. Taste. 
toastier, crispier Tostitos restaurant-style tortilla chips dipped in the queso smooth Monterey Jack cheese. Uh, honey, can we eat them now? Oh, yeah. Tostitos, now even tastier and crispier. Raiders, Patriots, Thursday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Back on Dr. Pepper, kickoff weekend here on ABC Sports. The Wolverines up 27 to 10. A couple of fumbles and a blocked field goal, keeping Northern Illinois from scoring more than 10 points at this point. And Northern Illinois doing a great job mixing it up offensively, and then get down there wasn't able to score. So Michigan comes in and blocks that kick. Hart, the carry, straight ahead for a couple on first down. It's been Jason Avant, though. With a big game so far, seven catches, 104 yards in the first half. Yeah, Terry, you know, all the talk's been about replacing Braylon Edwards, where you're never going to replace Braylon Edwards, but Jason Avant certainly has borrowed his cape and blue costume to be Superman today. You see him on the fade route, you see him on the, a post in the corner, and you see him across the field having an incredible day, seven catches, his first 100-yard game, and I do believe this is his fourth straight game with a touchdown reception. It is, as a matter of fact. Here comes Hart your way, slices through, and... Out to the 33. So the quick first step for Hart or on Avanto from Scott Walker right now. Scott? Well, guys, Jason Avant was shown commitment early on by the coaching staff. He injured himself in high school, injured his knee. He decided to come because Doy Carr said, we're going to honor your commitment and honor your scholarship. Well, he injured the same knee last year against Northwestern. It was his turn to show commitment. He actually managed to play through that, play against Ohio State, and help get Michigan to the Rose Bowl. And that commitment has made, you know, by his teammates, uh, they want made him a captain because of all that, guys. Yeah, it was his biggest honor, too, he told us the other day. T.J. Griffin, the outside linebacker, is down and injured right now. And speaking of injuries, remember Adrian Arrington, talented sophomore from Michigan, the wide receiver went out with an ankle injury in the first half, and he will not return. Here in the second. Good to see Griffin up and walking. Recently, one of the legendary names here at Michigan was given an honorary doctorate of law by the University of Michigan. When I look out at this group of graduates, I can see that you all are champions. To get a degree, to get a degree from this great university is just a tremendous thing. Glenn Bo Schembechler, it's our honor to have him join us in the booth right now. We don't have to call you doctor, right? It's a, no, no, a law. no. Uh, we certainly don't need another lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, it's great to have you up here. And, uh, you know, it's a special, uh, it's a special kind of unique opener for you because of Joe Novak, a uh, former player of right. yours from Ohio. Uh, uh, in that's way one. back in the middle 60s. Uh, Joe played for me. And uh, he was a wonderful defensive end. And I told him uh, yesterday that uh, of all the defensive ends I've ever had, he was the slowest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's turned out to be a, uh, he's a, a wonderful a coach. coach. Yes, sir. Ball dropped by Massacoy. Not an easy catch, but uh, brings up second and ten. So you. You hear it, another opener here at the University of right. Michigan in Ann Arbor. It's a special place. I know you've been through it many, many times, but uh, you still get the chills when you come to this stadium? Well, I, I get the chills, and I get the disappointments, too, when I see that defense. It really worries me that, uh, that uh, we're playing defense that way, and uh, I don't want to take anything away from uh, Northern Illinois. I think Joe's has them ready to play, and they... They play real good, sound football, but we we got to play better defense. Well, how would you improve that, Coach? You know, that's what that was all the talk coming into training camp. They bring Steve Stripling over from Michigan State. What would you do to try to get these guys to play better defensively? Well, first of all, I'm not sure that we have enough speed in there right now, uh, particularly in the second half. Uh, and the second thing is uh, our tackling is atrocious. Um, that. That's, that's not a uh, typical uh, Michigan tackling team. Talked about Joe Novak playing for you, and uh, there you are, up yeah, right-hand there. corner. Yeah, there we are. Back in the that's 60s. That's pretty good looking when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Joe, who looks a little bit different. Than yeah, he's well. a little bit different, yeah. <laughs> Third and one coming up, by the way, for Joe Novak's defense, trying to stop Michigan. Uh, the offense, on the other hand, a different story for the Wolverines. The Henny and Hart show. I think they can... Uh, there, there are some wide receivers 
that are uh, freshmen on this squad that you haven't seen right. that have uh, tremendous speed as well. Uh, they've got the receivers. I'm sorry to see uh, number 16 get hurt because uh, he's a burner too. Yeah, Adrian Arrington went out on yeah. the return of the kick. He's, uh, he's a good receiver. Where would you rank, Coach? You know, obviously being here a long time and a legend of Michigan football, in your in your opinion, where do you think Henny and Hart are right now? Where would they rank in your mind? <laughs> well, they've done a lot for just uh, two young kids. Um, Henny's an exceptional kind of quarterback, I think. And Hart, somehow, you're, you're back, and I've seen you run. He has the knack of once he's hit, he squirts, and he may get free. If he doesn't, he's going to get a couple extra yards. Right. That's the way he plays, and he weighs 191 pounds now, which is big for him. Mm. A couple of Big Ten titles, a share last year, five in the last eight years, and uh, back to the Rose Bowl for the second time. If they go this year, it's a national title game. Yeah. You can't, you can't win this conference unless you play great defense. So don't start talking about the Rose Bowl until you start playing better defense. Now they're they're good enough offensively, but. I don't know whether they can do it. Uh, Avant's got another catch. Should have a first down for Michigan, and uh, it's been a thrill, Coach. Absolutely. It's thank nice you. talking to you guys. We have to, hope and, to and see we, you back here. Thank you, sir. I enjoyed watching you play. I appreciate it. We we definitely know what you're going to talk about to these guys when this game is over. I'm not talking. Oh no no no! Don't get the no. Don't mess with you. <laughs> defense, I'm, defense, I'm defense. I'm telling my wife that. Okay. <laughs> Bo Schembechler, the legend. Thanks, Coach. Avant with another catch, a gain of 11. They move the chains, and a huge day for Jason Avant. Eight catches and well over 100 yards, and Mike Hart has also gone over 100 yards on the ground. Hart with 108. And you, you know, you really want to celebrate Jason Avant as a player and as a person. You know, he missed the Rose Bowl, and you could tell when he was talking to us, you know, in his face that it was so painful for him not to be able to be a part of that game and for that team. But being a quiet leader, but obviously a leader who shows through his actions and the way he is on the football field, he's having a career day. Quick throw to Preston right at the line of scrimmage. Still up. Great balance, Preston, to the 33. And he's passing. Hit a couple of times before he finally Preston. went down. Another Another one of those guys that they're looking to come in with the production of Braylon Edwards. You see Chad Henney on a quick hitch here, and Steve Breston just so dangerous in the open field. Always going to make the first guy miss, goes down, makes another cut inside there. And he's a guy that Northern Illinois, when he gets in the open field, you certainly want to contain him and have as many people around because he can take it to the house. Gain of seven. They call that a lateral, so it's not a forward pass for Henney. He's put up big numbers already in this one. Freshman inside the 20, all the way down to the 18. A gain of 14 for the 5'11", 228-pounder. You're giving him inches, Terry. You're giving him inches. You see Kevin Grady here coming on the right side. Great block by Matt Lentz and Kaloje on the right side. Excuse me, Ruben Riley on the right side of that field. And soon as Kevin gets the ball, everybody in this audience is anticipating him to do big things. So Kevin Grady, as soon as they hand him the ball, it's like everybody starts to rise in expectation of a big play. Another long drive, 10 plays, 57 yards. Yeah, Grady with bigger expectations certainly than a park had coming in, even though Hart eventually had an unbelievable freshman year last year inside the 15, Mike down to the 14. But he's had to deal with different things already than Mike Hart, I think, had to deal with last year. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he came in last year, was able to graduate early, comes in and practices with this team at the yeah. Rose Bowl. And that time he spent with, this, with the team was invaluable because already he's kind of through the first phase. He's already through kind of the hazing with the other guys. He's not necessarily so green when it comes time for fall practice. And then the relationship that he built with Mike Hart, that was huge. And, and, and for Hart to be a true sophomore and a leader of this team, to take him in and become good friends with a guy he's going to be it's just a great story it tells you so much more about Mike Hart as a person. How much going on? Tripped up the line of scrimmage is Mike Hart, Keenan Blaylark, and a junior from Elgin, Illinois, suburban Chicago, on the stop. Brings up third and five. We talked a little bit about it earlier. As a running back, and, and you were one of the great ones, pro bowler in the NFL, what's the toughest adjustment your first year on campus? 
I think everything, you know, first of all, you're coming to a new place. You got to get used to where you're going to be staying. You got a whole new set of teammates, and then you have a whole new set of expectations. And all of those things are off the field. Then you get on the field, it's the general speed of the game that you have to get adjusted to. Because this is, you know, he's a great player, but this is not the high school guys that you faced before. This is the Big Ten, and there are going to be other guys equally as talented as you. Hart about a yard shy of a first down. The crowd wants them to go. Fourth and one, as the crowd always does. And he's still out there. Coach Carr obviously making a decision where he's going to try to go for it or get these guys to jump off sides. The freshman Grady is in the backfield along with Will Paul. Here's Grady his way across the 10 looks to be short though we'll wait for the spot and the measurement See here, Kevin Grady getting the handoff. You just get a small indicator of his power because he got hit probably two yards deep and was able to still drag the defender across and stretch out to try to get the first down. If the marker was right on the far sideline, he's short. And he is. Northern Illinois holds and takes over just inside the 10. So for Joe Novak in his 10th year, some new life and some momentum. Husky football when we come back to Ann Arbor. This month I will rack up a massive cell phone bill talking about absolutely nothing. When my parents open next month's cell phone bill, they will cry. My calls will be monitored like a felon's. My dad's patience with my cell phone bill will run out at a socially crippling time. Don't get schooled in wireless. Get GoPhone. Pay as you go with cash or pick your plan with debit or credit. GoPhone comes with everything but a surprise bill. I will be grounded several times this year, but not because of my GoPhone. Only from Singular, raising the bar. horsepower V8 Cadillac STS. Let's dance. Right through. This guy's about to find out what it's like to win a college bowl game. <laughs> now he's about to find out what it's like to win five college bowl games all at once. Enter to win Cooper Tire's Ultimate Bowl Tour, and you and three friends could be headed to five bowl games in one week on a private jet. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And who knows, this could be you. Back here in Ann Arbor, 27 to 10. Michigan with the lead, but it has not been a blowout by any means. Northern Illinois driving late in the first half, coughed it up, then they fumbled a punt deep in their own territory, and huge turn of events late in the second quarter and a stop just a moment ago on fourth down so Phil Horvath taking over first and ten from his own ten. Garrett Wolf will have a hundred yards waits and then slices through up to the twenty nine a burst of speed for the junior from Chicago. Yeah, Phil Horvath, I mean, Garrett Wolf, you're going to get a look at him here from the end zone of how he made this cut. It's a great block here from the center coming around. Brian Van Acker comes out and makes a great block on Scott McClintock, and the guy is just so fast. As soon as he sees a, any, any crease, he just explodes through the hole. He hesitates, takes a look, and then Patience, goes. I mean, this is the, I mean, a great running backs. Patience, vision, and then the explosive ability to be able to make the plays. 11 carries, 143 yards in the game for Garrett Wolf. Bounces out again. Nowhere to go, though. Ahead to the 32. Burgess was there along with Chris Graham. Well, Dr. Pepper College Football Kickoff Weekend on ABC. Brought to you by Cadillac and the new STS Breakthrough. Singular. 
raising the bar. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Rocky Mountain refreshing Coors Lights. Gorgeous opening weekend of college football here at the Big House. More than 110,000 on hand. I believe they told us it was the fourth largest for an opener in school history. Nordine, the catch, coughed it up at the 38, the scramble. Michigan got their first Wolverine football. Looked like a hit by Prescott Burgess was able to lodge the ball away from Nordine. Willis Berenger was there, the junior from Toledo. See the play action roll out here by Phil Horvath. He's going to come around and, and hit Nordine right here, who gets hit by one guy. And then right there, Burgess, Prescott Burgess comes in and just helmet, hits right on the football. Jamal, they've had no trouble moving the football today at all against Michigan. And three fumbles have done them in. Yeah, and just like Joe, um, Joe Novak said coming out in the halftime, he said, you know, again, against any team, you don't want three fumbles, especially not against Michigan in Michigan. And he gives it to Grady. Look at the power after the initial speed to the 24. Took a host of tacklers to bring him down. I got a feeling next game when Grady comes out against Notre Dame, we're going to be hearing a choo-choo train sound every time he grabs the ball. You get a look at it right here, Kevin Grady breaking down. This is a guy who's 5'9", about 230 pounds. One of seven MAC Big Ten contests today. Grady with 33. And he sets up the screen. There's Grady. Turns outside. Got a first down and more inside the 10 to the 8. Take you back a year ago to a game you and I worked. And Oklahoma to start the season against Holy Green and won Adrian Peterson in his opener. And today we get to see another perhaps future star in the backfield. Absolutely. You know, we're, we're coming into that game. That they said they didn't know how much Adrian Peterson was going to play. Well, it was clear from his first carry that he was a special talent. And, you know, Mike Hart, you know, we've been talking about him all game long. He is a tremendous running back. But this is a guy with so much ability that even with Mike Hart, you have got to find a way to get him to play. Brady diving inside the five to the four. And don't forget, they've got Max Martin, who was a freshman last year from Madison, Alabama, and Jerome Jackson, who's a junior. And those two guys are going to get playing time this year. Yeah, you know, they asked Lloyd Card in the release, why do you have four tailbacks listed? He said, I have four very talented guys, and any of them could play. And this, I mean, this is this is the best problem you could have. You could never have enough running backs. Dan Reeves used to always say that to me. All loose down at the two, the scramble. We'll wait to see. Northern Illinois thinking they have it. And they do. Kevin Brady was the ball carrier. So the Huskies get it back. And Joe Novak finally getting a break in terms of a turnover. Lloyd Carr now the man to shake his head. Yeah, you're going to look here. Chad Henney's going to hand it off to Kevin Grady, who comes in. He's got both hands on the ball, but the ball's in the worst possible place. When you put your hands over the ball and the ball's in front of you, you see right there on his way down, just sticks his hand in there and just gets the ball out. That's why you want to tuck the football on your right or left side and try not to keep it in front of you, because when you get in this situation where you're going to get tackled, you're going to lose the ball. First turnover for Michigan. Is that something that you learn when you step on a college campus? Absolutely. Campus when, as soon as you... You know, I think that's something that you learn if you have good coaches in high school even. You know, but it happens sometimes, especially when you're going into the pile to try to protect yourself. The running backs have a tendency to put both hands over the ball and try to put it in, in front of them. Nearly 110,000. There's about 5,000 Northern Illinois fans here in Ann Arbor. Wanting a stop at the goal line. They got it. Drilled back. Chris Graham was the first man there. You're talking about critical drive for Michigan defense that and everybody's going to have comments about because of what Garrett Wolf is doing. But you got a you got a team now on the two yard line. On the two yard line, you see Gabe Watson right here coming. Gets great penetration up the front. You see Prescott Burgess right there. Everybody is converging on this. Chris Graham right there makes a great tackle. But this is one of those things that makes or breaks defense. This is where the character of your defense comes from. In a game like this, when you have a team down inside on the two-yard line. Joe Novak all week long and his team practicing in loud conditions, music blaring just for this reason. Trying to hear the signals deep in their own end zone. 
Complete. That's a big play. Out across the 10 to the 11. Should tone powers on the catch. That's his third this afternoon. You're talking about confidence in your offense. John Bond obviously has it. You see the roll out here. Get Phil Horvath moved out of the pocket. He had a great move there. He's, he's out of the pocket. And you're going to throw the ball. Very dangerous. Most coaches will not do that, especially when they're backed up in the end zone. But Northern Illinois has been able to do it. They've been able to move the ball today, so there's no reason why you don't try again. John Vaughn, second-year coordinator with Northern Illinois. Obviously, with some questions answered today in terms of his quarterback running the show. He's been terrific. Wolf. Close to a first down. Yeah, and Terry, you talked about questions answered. I mean, there is no indication that this is basically Phil Horvath's first time Run leading this football team. Brady. He's sitting in there like he's a four-year starter. He's been on the football field for the last couple years first for down. Northern, Northern Illinois. Illinois. And they do get the first down. That's huge. Backed up at their own two to withstand the crowd noise and get out of their own end zone with that throw. Horvath started three games last year, but it was Josh Haldy's team. There's no doubt about that. He had a foot injury early in the year, and Horvath got the starts. Still trying to communicate at the line of scrimmage now. A.J. Harris out to the 15. A.J. Harris. You said it, communicating at the line of scrimmage, and, and, and Joe Novak said, you know, the reason why we like this guy so much is he's very cerebral. And John backed it up he said you know it's not that he's as athletic as Britt Davis you know the other quarterback but he's so cerebral and he gets it you've seen him come to the line of scrimmage three or four times and check Northern Illinois out of bad situations breaking the action as the third quarter comes to a close here in Ann Arbor 27 to 10 Michigan we take you to New York and John Saunders Northern Illinois well, we wonder what the Pontiac game-changing performance of the week will be. Could it be this from the Oklahoma game? A sack and a fumble, a couple of those by the young quarterbacks. Don't forget, you can nominate your Pontiac game-changing performance at ESPN.com. Keyword, Pontiac. Again, that's your Pontiac game-changing performance. We'll continue with more in a moment. Hey. Hey. Yeah. You look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Oh, when I'm hurt and miss work? Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yep. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. <laughs> The passage is intense, but if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. Tiger is back to his championship winning ways, notching two more majors in 2005. He looks to stay hot against a tough field at the Deutsche Bank Championship. Sunday and Monday on ABC Sports. On Tuesday, September 27th. The president has had a stroke. For the first time in history. The vice president assumes the presidency. A woman will be. President of the United States. We don't need the world. The world to see a soft, indecisive woman commanding the troops. We can save this country. Save it from her. The truth is, I know I can do this. Oscar winner Gina Davis and Emmy winner Donald Sutherland. Commander-in-Chief premieres Tuesday, September 27th, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Listen up. This is Darren. He's the newest member of the league. Whoa, 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 hold up. What can he do? Can he fly? No, cannot. He's got superhuman strength, though, right? Come on, man. You got to be able to do something. Levitate, go through all sock. I can do one thing. Well, let's see it. Alan Krzyzewski and Kathy Brock, weeknights at 6. 
fourth quarter about to get underway here at Michigan Stadium. Michigan, a program that has gone to 30 straight bowl games that leads the nation. They've had 37 straight non-losing seasons. Bill Horvath in Northern Illinois. Second down to open up the fourth quarter. On the run, throws out. Almost picked off. Sam Herg had it go through his hands. And then it was almost intercepted. Leon Hall on the coverage. Yeah, good coverage by Leon Hall. He was right on top of him. And Sam Hurd, you know, almost lost the ball. You get a look at it. See Leon Hall closing on him right as the ball gets there and was able to knock the ball out of Sam Hurd's hands. So third and eight for the Huskies. And here comes the crowd again. From the shotgun this time. Hold back. Tipped up, and this one is picked off. Hall on the interception at the 25. Pat Massey, the man who tipped it at the line of scrimmage. You got it. You got it. Two great shots of Leon Hall there. The play before, you saw the closing speed to come in. Now you see him keeping his eyes on the quarterback and being able to react and make this interception. Obviously, with a lot of help from Pat Massey, you're going to see the big fella right here stick his hands up at the last second, and then Leon Hall comes across and is able to get that interception. So the pick after the three fumbles, this is a team that just didn't turn it over last year. They had one fumble. This is incredible. Northern Illinois last year coughed lost. up one fumble. They lost one all year. They've had three of those already today, and now the pick. Brady tripped up. He may have fallen himself at the 22. No, but I really, Terry, that is an amazing statistic. I think people don't realize that. They fumbled eight times. They lost only one, one. fumble <laughs> all of last season. Okay, now how frustrated do you think Joe Novak is? His team has played fairly well offensively. Oh, they've yeah. been great. But then you come into this game and you lose. You have three, tur four turnovers now, but three fumbles. And you can't win against Michigan on the road if you're going to do that if you're Northern Illinois. And he runs, throws a little bit behind the intended receiver, Massacoy, the tight end. Can't hold on. So he is human. After Tim Massacoy, who's been catching and everyone blocking great all day long. Six four, two hundred and forty eight pounds, a fifth year senior Massacoy who caught eighteen passes a year ago. You get a look at Chad Henney there, and you know what's so crazy about what he did last year. He is already in Michigan's record books in one football season. He's already like number nine all time in passing. He's already in their record. I mean, Michigan's been playing football now. How many years? 126? Yep. This is the 126 football team for Michigan. And a true freshman comes in, has an incredible season last year, and has already logged into the record books after one season. Third best season in terms of yards ever at Michigan. And now Braylon Edwards isn't here, but he's got a host of guys he can go to and has today. A little bit behind him at the 21, Doug Dutch on the reception. We go to John Saunders in New York again. John. With the Dr. Pepper update, Georgia facing Boise State. DJ Shockley at it again. You saw him run for a touchdown. Here he throws 40 yards to Kenneth Harris, who was wide open. 14 to nothing. Georgia, though, still in the first quarter, about four minutes to go with the lead. Uh, John, back here in Ann Arbor. Garrett Rivas on for another try. This one from 38 yards. This one from 48 earlier in the game. This one up and good, though. Junior from Tampa, Florida. Another three on the board for the Wolverines. They lead 30 to 10. So what seems to be the problem? Well, I think he's in shock. What happened? Well, there's this promotion on his bottle of Coors Light, and he won two tickets to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl tickets? With his bottle? Mm -hmm. I see. Oh. Give me that bottle. Give me that bottle. Give me that bottle. Oh. Grab a Coors or Coors Light for your chance to win playoff tickets or even a trip to the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's okay. I'm a doctor.
Is your daily face routine irritating the man in the mirror? Introducing Nivea for Men's Sensitive Lotion, an advanced formula free of fragrance and alcohol for a calm and comfortable face. Better? Better than ever. We're over here. New Sensitive Lotion and Face Wash, only from Nivea for Men. You see him in your rearview mirror, and suddenly you're the world's best driver. You hit the brakes, hang up the cell phone, use your turn signal. Sound familiar? Allstate knows there's a good driver in each of us. A police car shouldn't be the only thing that brings it out. So Allstate cuts safe drivers a break, up to 20%. Reward works better than punishment. That's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? The President of the United States. Gina Davis is Commander-in-Chief. Premieres Tuesday, September 27th, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. 20-point lead for the Wolverines here at home in their opener. 13-16 left in the fourth. Lloyd Carr in his 11th season. Five Big Ten titles in the last eight years. Another trip to the Rose Bowl last year, but the loss to Texas and the defensive questions opening up this new season. Not just that, though. You read reports about people wondering when Lloyd Carr is going to retire, which is something I just don't see happening anytime in the near future. Yeah, he just turned 60, right? He's got a lot of time. Up to the 25, and that's where Northern Illinois will start on the next series. 13-10 left in this one. Take another break here in Ann Arbor. Come right back to the opener for both clubs. Return to the 25 yard One strike. Oh. Spin attack. High block. Magic spell. <sighs> Underarm attack. Ooh. Cobra bite. Ah! Ah! Ow! Ow! Restart. Restart. Tired of waiting for your reward? Now that you can get thank you points with your city credit card and for banking at Citibank, you'll get cool stuff sooner. I'm worried about leaving my family alone when I travel. What if something happened? That's why I got ADT. I came home one night and found a burglar in my house. And we live in a nice neighborhood. That's why I got ADT. And now you can get the peace of mind that comes from America's number one security company. Call now and save $100 off the regular price when you buy ADT's family package. Why worry when you have the security of ADT? ADT. Always there. Patriots, Thursday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Crystal clear day here in Ann Arbor. The sun beginning to set in the late afternoon hours. Over the press box here at the big house. Better than 110,000 on hand once again for this opener. 126 seasons of football at Michigan. Horvath giving it to his star back. Wolf, there's a flag in the backfield, though, and he is brought down out at the 29. Great, great rush on the side by Lamar Woodley and Doug Free just got caught trying to hook him so uh, Garrett Wolf can get outside of him. So that will back up this Northern Illinois offense trying to come back here late in the fourth. It's been the turnovers that have cost them in this game dearly. Holding number 62 offense 10 yard penalty from the previous spot repeat first down. 
As you said, Doug, free on the hole. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary and the turnovers tell the tale. Terry, you said it. This has costed them dearly. You see right here the, the fumble. Boom, one turnover. And we said it already that Northern Illinois only lost one fumble all of last year. Now you see Pat Macy getting up there and Leon Hall picking up the pass, picking off the pass there for Phil Horbath. And, you know, it's 30 to 10, but four turnovers for Northern Illinois today. Yep, two in the second half that you just saw. So the pass ahead to Wolf, and that ball was down on the ground. That's the play that really worked for them in the first half, but eventually after a long run, Wolf coughed it up. That oh, was the first big turnover. Yeah, and Phil Horvath looked like he was throwing a basketball. He kind of like two hand pushed it <laughs> towards Garrett Wolf. It was nice fundamentals in terms of a basketball two hand pass. Wolf and Harris today. Harris only five carries for the 22 yards though. And look at that, 11 yards per carry, but most of that based on that 76 yard touchdown run. Yeah, and it's not like they've run the ball a lot. Between the two of them, they only have 18 carries. Second and 20, complete out at the 35. Chaton Powers still up across the 40 to the 42. It's, I mean, you know, this is just a nightmare situation for Michigan. When you are at second, I mean, it's second down and 20, and you get, and you let a guy complete a pass for 18 yards, and then you got six or seven guys around him, and nobody's able to make the tackle. You know, con credit to Chaton, Chaton Powers for being able to catch the ball and do what he did after, but nobody from Michigan's defense is, 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 is hurrying to the guy making tackles. Gain of 27 and a first down. It's a defense today. When you talk about stopping the big plays, the defense, give them credit, they've come up with the big play, causing the turnover, but they haven't been able to stop the progression. There's another fumble. It's free, and it's Michigan football. Another big play by the defense. Right, you know, and a guy whose name we've been calling all day, Lamar Woodley again. Lloyd Card said to us yesterday, he is one of the best players in the country on either side of the football. You get a look at him right there, again, going against Doug Free, who's the best, one of the best best blockers in the MAC. And Lamar Woodley's just able to get around him, and his combination of size and explosiveness, just um, from a defensive lineman he can, who can play defensive end or linebacker, that's just a dangerous combination. So they've come up with the outstanding play, but in terms of just stopping this offense, they haven't been able to do it. Lamar Woodley, though, with 70 tackles a year ago. So Matt Gutierrez, the junior from Concord, California, takes over for Chad Henney at the quarterback spot. Gives it off to Jerome Jackson, who's in for Hart and Grady. His first carry of the afternoon, the junior from Saginaw, Michigan. Over on the right side, inside the 30 to the 26. Gutierrez was set to start last year, but he had the shoulder injury, remember. Henny started the first game, and eventually Matt got the shoulder surgery. Yeah, it's not like Matt Gutierrez coming in as a slouch. You see him right there, 64%, 68% completion ratio, and it was the guy who was going to be the starter, like you just said. And Henny's down, and Gutierrez comes in, so basically, there's really not that much of a difference between the two. Uh, Henny with a great year of experience last year, like I said, a year flag on the play as they get it to the 28. So there's your big difference, and Henny with all the the reps now that Henny has gotten. I mean, he's your star quarterback, but Gutierrez certainly a solid backup who you'd like to see get a number of reps if you're Lloyd Carr. Absolutely. Lloyd Carr said he's definitely going to try to get in situations where he can get Matt Gutierrez reps because he was the guy who was going to start last year. And, you know, Chad Henney, Henney has taken off now and become a star here in Michigan football. Outside, defensive line, five-yard penalty, first down. But Lloyd Card said, hey, I want to get this guy some playing time. Don't forget, tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern time on ABC, West Virginia takes on Syracuse. And then Monday night, a huge one early in the season, 8 o'clock Eastern, number 9 Miami, taking on number 14 Florida State in a rivalry that's become a great ACC matchup. Dr. Pepper kickoff weekend all through Monday night here on ABC. Gutierrez. Off the play action, under pressure, throws Avant with a leaping catch inside the 15. Nine catches on the day for Jason Avant. 
You get a look at Jason Avon, who's going to be all the way on the right side of the field, is going to come across the line of scrimmage. And basically, at this point, he's just trailing Matt Gutierrez to see when there was going to be a chance to throw. Makes a great catch, even with a guy behind him coming up to hit him. Lots of cheer about on the offensive end for the Wolverines. That was a great job of Gutierrez, too, being able to deliver that ball when somebody knowing he was going to get hit. Max Martin in the game now, and he gets the call. Drives down to the six. Martin, the sophomore from Madison, Alabama. Max Martin, a guy who comes in last year with Mike Hart, both true freshmen now, he's a true sophomore. And it's just, you know, for Michigan to be so deep in the backfield position is such an advantage for Lloyd Carr because regardless of who's going to run the ball with the standout offensive line they have, they, they all of their tailbacks have the ability to take it to the house. All of them have big play potential. Massey in motion. And Martin tripped up at the line, falls ahead for a gain of maybe one. Ken West tripped him up. Michigan, a team that has not finished lower than third in the Big Ten in the last eight years. You know, Terry, we touched on it a little bit, but the whole conversation about is Lloyd Carr going to retire anytime soon? It's just, I don't see it happening. I mean, he's got Michigan program in a great position right now. Back-to-back -back Big Ten championships, obviously trying to go all the way this time and playing the Rose Bowl, but I just don't see anything on the horizon where Lloyd Carr is going to walk away from this program. Play action, Gutierrez still looking. Throws it away. I'm not sure, even though he is a very respected college football coach who has won a national championship in 97, all the Big Ten titles we talked about, that he yet gets the credit that he deserves, and maybe no one will for a long time because the man we had in the booth yeah, earlier, Bo know, it's, it's, that's, it's very difficult because the things that Bo Schembechler did here for Michigan football and to build this program up, I mean, you're witnessing it. The stadium and all the facilities and everything, this, this is a top-notch program, and he doesn't. You know, it's true, he doesn't get enough credit. Jared Rivas on for a 23-yard try now. From the shadow into the sun, Rivas... Up and good once again. So number four in Michigan, three more on the board, and a 33-10 lead over Northern Illinois here in the opener. It's the last weekend of summer, but that's no reason for the summer breezes to end. The Home Depot can help. Right now, get 20% off every ceiling fan in the store. Beautiful designs from the best brands like Hunter and Hampton Bay. America's number one ceiling fan. And now through Labor Day, get no payments and no interest for 12 months store-wide when you use your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. Summer is slipping away. Make the most of it. At the Home Depot, you can do it. We can help. Sport is sport. A foul's a foul. And a bat's a bat, even if it's flat. 10 feet on the west side is 10 feet on the east side. Football is football, unless it's football. Now, a win's a win, a loss is a loss. But no matter what, you better come with it. Because it's 90 feet to first, no matter where home is. What does the future hold? Will you have the choices to make your world better? To live the life you dream of? At Pacific Life, planning for a better tomorrow is what we're all about. That's why for over 135 years, Pacific Life has offered millions of people a world of financial solutions to help them live well now and plan well for the future. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Michigan up by 23 over Northern Illinois. Number four team in the nation at home for an opener as the shadows come across Michigan Stadium. Our Nissan drive summary, six plays, 29 yards, eventually the 23-yard field goal from Garrett Rivas. Davis and Harris back deep. It's Harris again. Got to take a knee and bring it out to the 20 for the Huskies to start there. Now, Dr. Pepper College Football Kickoff Weekend on ABC Sports, brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. 
Nissan, who reminds you to shift the way you move through the world. And Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. No one leaving so far here at the big house. As the temperatures perfect this afternoon, mid 70s, maybe a little bit lower than that now. And the Wolverines opening up another season, two straight Big Ten titles. Garrett Wolf looks for room, not this time. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So a chance for now Michigan to get the second team in there and maybe make sure they don't show too much with Notre Dame coming here to the big house next week. Yeah, and you know, I don't know how many of the second second team guys should actually be playing because defensively, you know, they did get the turnovers, but that was more of a you know of the fault of Northern Illinois than Michigan creating turnovers. You know, Northern Illinois just giving the ball up and fumbling in other situations, but they definitely defensively have some questions that they need to address and figure out how they can contain big play threats. Rifty Carvin, a post-game report comes up, time permitting, incomplete pass, Sam Hurd, there's contact and a late flag. He and Grant Mason dueling. See who the penalty's on. Interference on Michigan. Sam Hurd coming in the slot, just gonna try to get inside. That's interference by the defense, number 13. Stop foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, as soon as Grant Mason realized he was beat on the inside, he just kind of wrapped his arms around Sam Hurd. Don't forget, continue tonight with the action not long from now, 8 o'clock Eastern. Fighting Irish on the road to take on Pittsburgh and Texas A&M against Clemson. Death Valley under the lights tonight. Two good ones. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Weiss against Wanstead. That'll be fun you to watch. You know why it's going to be so much fun to watch? Because they've faced each other so many times. Patriots, Dolphins. Yep. I mean, they're rivals. They're exactly and so right. now you take it to on, on the collegiate level, they're going to be facing each other in the first game. And they know, I mean, trust me, Charlie Weiss knows exactly what Dave Wanstead's going to try to do defensively and vice versa for Dave Wanstead. Yep. Second and nine coming up. 133 plus rushing seventh in the Big Ten in 2004 and today 175. So some things to work on still for Jim Herman and the defense. Okay. Complete out across the 40 to the 45 yard line. The big man Jake Nordine with the catch. We look at those numbers and you know clearly it's going to be something that's going to frustrate Lloyd Carr and Jim Herman and, and then the 74. The 74-yard play by Garrett Wolf. Gain of 18, so they'll move the chains. First and 10 with under eight. And Joe Novak's club looking for some positive things now, the last seven and a half minutes. And you know, he could call, call a lot of positive things for Northern Illinois. Obviously, Garrett Wolf's play and the way that Phil Horvath has come in and, and run this offense. And, and the one thing that was going to frustrate him, and, and I said it earlier, is just the turnovers. And a football team that rarely turns the ball over or loses turnovers, I should say, having so many in this game in this setting. Yeah, you don't expect to do that if you're a team that uh, just hasn't turned the ball over. No, and they, because they've been moving the ball, and that right before halftime to have that 14-point swing take place, that just kind of took the wind out of the sails of Northern Illinois. You mentioned the defense and the work to be done. Steve Stripling, the defensive line coach, and a new one here in Ann Arbor. Where'd he come from? Well, East Lansing, which doesn't happen very often. They hired him away from Michigan State. The catch and another first down inside the 40. But uh, Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, and Lloyd Carr hiring Stripling this past offseason. See that big ass right there coming from Michigan State. Biggest rival for Michigan, but you know he and he comes over to a very talented group. You look at Lamar Woodley, you look at the the, the captain Pat Massey, you look at Gabe Watson, the guy, the nose tackle that they're expecting big things from, and then Jer Jeremy, uh, excuse me, Jeremy Van Van Alstein. You know, all of those guys, they're a talented group of guys. They just didn't get a lot of penetration on the quarterback. Last year, they only had 20 sacks. Wolf to the 39. We talked to Lloyd Carr about his new acquisition. Steve Stripling coming over from East Lansing. I've known uh, Steve for a long time. I've watched his uh, 
uh, the work that he's done everywhere he's been. He's uh, a great teacher. I think he's going to make a significant uh, impact on our defense. You know, you're listening to Lloyd Card's comments, but the thing is, Jim Herman was really interesting. He said as soon as he got here, it felt like in that first meeting that Stripling had been around here for 10 years. Yeah, he said he, he's from the same coaching school as us. He has the same philosophies as us. So it was just a natural fit. He understands what we're trying to do and where we're trying to get our athletes to go. Yeah, from that Big Ten tradition of, uh, of coaches, the, the Bo Schembechler, Woody Hayes tradition and way of teaching and coaching, Sam Hurd, the man who is down and injured right now for the Huskies. And that's what, if you're Joe Novak, you really fear in the last five and a half minutes now, an injury to one of your stars. Yeah, and you know, and obviously, definitely, for sure. And then you got Joe Novak. This is a team that doesn't scrimmage too much because of this. Yep, contact uh, in some ways for the first time today. when I started it up. Max Life Oil greatly reduced that smoke. 198,000 miles, still going. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. I think there's something down here! Lost, the new season premieres Wednesday, September 21st, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. 23 point lead for Michigan here at home. You got the Irish coming here next week. And as we mentioned at the top of the day, the Wolverines starting the season with three straight home games. So you get to get your engine going at home at the big house until you hit uh, the solid Big Ten schedule. Third and two, Horvath to Harris. Outside, he's got a first down and a lot more inside the 22. The 16, we go to John in New York. Well, Terry, it's time for the singular All-America Player of the Week update. This guy might get some votes. Brian Calhoun, over 200 yards for Wisconsin and five rushing touchdowns, which ties his school record. Text vote to 87654 now on your singular phone for your ballot and a chance to win a trip to the national championship. Terry, back to you. All right, John. So the national championship at the Rose Bowl. He should be in contention for 43 carries, regardless yeah, just, of how many yards he had. But just 43 the carries. carries, wow. Harris, another carry to the eight. Talking about opening with three home games. First time in 2003, the, the three straight wins and big ones, including 38 to nothing over Notre Dame. And in 97, of course, they won the national title. Exactly. Three straight wins at home, and then they win the national championship. But, you know, they're coming in with Notre Dame next week. Charlie Weiss is one of the things that he's so highly acclaimed for is how he breaks down teams. Now, coming in, you're looking at this Michigan defense and the way they've been playing today, and Charlie's going to be 
very excited when he sees the running lanes, number one, and then the big play potential that Notre Dame could have if they got the guys who can get it done. Yeah, but uh, former offensive coordinator, that's one side. How do you stop Michigan? Listen, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think you come into the big house, number one, or playing against Michigan thinking you're, you're going to stop them. You're going to try to eliminate the, bl the big play potential because they just have so many weapons, and you're not going to stop a team like that. You try to throw them off. You got to try to get some pressure on Chad Henney. You got to try to get in his face and obviously try to contain Mike Hart. The opening drive of the game was a 14-play drive over 70 yards for Michigan. And Northern Illinois, an even longer one on their first series. And now coming up on the, uh, that was the 11th play of this drive. So neither defense really stopping the other offense today. It's been the turnovers that have told the tale. Yeah, and I don't think too many teams, you know, are going to be able to stop Michigan. You know, I just said, I just, there's just so many weapons. And, I, and if they can get this defensive situation under control and, and if they're able to solid be a, become a little bit more solid and contain teams, then uh, they have the potential to be back in the Rose Bowl again. First and goal from the three. Harris hit hard at the line, drives ahead, gets to the end zone, touchdown. AJ Harris with the ball You've seen the explosiveness and the, the cutting ability of Garrett Wolf, and now you just got an example the power of uh, AJ Harris. You know, 6'1, 220, a guy who also runs a 4'4. AJ Harris, 10 carries, 54 yards, and now a touchdown on the board. Chris, Chris Nendick will attempt the extra point, Phil Horvath to hold. Extra point by Mendrick. Nendrick is really up and good. This is a team that is going to be awfully tough to stop come the max schedules, Northern Illinois. And then five from the See him in your rearview mirror, and suddenly you're the world's best driver. You hit the brakes, hang up the cell phone, use your turn signal. Sound familiar? Allstate knows there's a good driver in each of us. A police car shouldn't be the only thing that brings it out. So Allstate cuts safe drivers a break, up to 20%. Reward works better than punishment. That's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? Would you kindly tell me what you're doing in the road? I'm with the help desk. You're lost. You're headed to Fresno. Fresno, right. This is the road to Albuquerque. How'd you know we were lost? The boxes told me. The boxes? RFID radio tags on the cargo. Helps track shipments. The boxes knew we were lost. Maybe the boxes should drive. Very funny. Joe Novak in his 10th year as the head coach at Northern Illinois. You talk about the job in turning around a program. He started 1 and 26, and has now won 46 of the last 75 games, including a share of the MAC West title last year and winning a bowl game for the first time in 21 years. Yeah, and since 2001, they're 4 and 5 versus BCS teams, and in 97, they beat three of them on, when they marched inside the top 10. Yeah, you're right. They, they've beaten. Excuse me. In 2003, they three. beat three. Couple. Yeah, they beat three teams yeah. on the way to uh, going inside the top ten. So this is, you know, he's done. He's done a tremendous job with this program. Maryland, Alabama, and Iowa State that year. As we take another look at the touchdown run. AJ Harris going right through the middle. The onside, uh, perhaps a timeout. Michigan. Let me get the hands team out there. So while we have a moment, we send it down to Scott Walker on the sideline. 
Terry, thank you. And you know, you talked earlier about Adam Krause, the native of New Orleans. In fact, his house just blocks from Lake Pontchartrain, very, very close to one of the levee breaks. Well, for Krause, he feels better because his parents got out of New Orleans before the hurricane hit. They stayed at a camp near Utica, Mississippi. They thought the hospitality there was amazing. They are here in Ann Arbor, Michigan right now. And when I talked to his father, who's had some health issues, I said, what does it mean to watch your son here today? He said, it's all about living life. That's what I learned from this hurricane. It is about living life. And certainly, living life in this environment is good for Michigan and good for the Krauses. Terry? And thankfully, they got out of the air. It's been, I mean, just heartbreaking to watch the coverage all week long from what's happening down in New Orleans. But take a moment here to remind you that the American Red Cross is spearheading the relief of the devastation left by Hurricane Katrina. Outside the stadium, they're raising funds. They were selling the programs, which go for $5, $2 of that, of every program, was going to the Red Cross. And if you'd like to help, you can call 1-800-HELP-NOW. So uh, please, uh, please do that. Uh, just the worst natural disaster we've, we've seen in this country. Reston back deep. the only one the hands team up there and waiting for the onside there it comes and did it go far enough Wolverines going ahead and getting it anyway of course Avant yes. getting the big play Jason Avant again making a big play for Wolverines stepping up and getting the onside kick I don't know that this would have necessarily gone 10 yards anyway. But you, yeah. you want to second guess it, so Jason Avon comes up and gets it and takes a big lick for it, too. Look at the day he's had. Nine catches, first time over 100 yards. And Braylon Edwards watching from the sidelines. And just one of the young men who uh, has stepped up to replace the Litnikoff winner. Jackson to the 38. And as these last few minutes wind off the clock, a reminder, I'd like to thank uh, all of those who helped us bring you the action. Executive producer of ABC Sports, Mike Pearl. Bob Toms, senior producer of ABC. Coordinating producer of college football, Bob Goodrich. Jim Ressler, our producer. Jeff Wynn, our director. Steve Feinberg, Eric Talent, Mark Lewis, Rhino Boyle, all here with us. John the Chance, Jay Gleason. Back in the studio, Tim Weinkoff, Kelvin Haywood, Kevin Berman, and uh, also out here, computer stats, Ron Vitrano, Mark Williams, our spotter, and John Madry in the booth, our statistician today in Ann Arbor. Jerome Jackson fights his way, should have a first down. Also, I want to thank the sports information directors, both staffs, Bruce Monty, Dave Abloff, Jim Schneider from Michigan, Tom Corsick from Northern Illinois. Thank you to those guys who uh, get us all the info through the week as we get ready for college football and yet another season here on ABC. Jamal? And yeah, this is an exciting start of season for Michigan. At least you, you come in and Chad Henney comes in and has a great game. He, he leaves without any injuries. Mike Hart comes in and does the things. These guys both picked up where they left off last year, which is great for this Michigan football team. And now you know, Tim Gutierrez is getting a chance to play because of because of the score. But I, I tell you what, you know, Joe Novak, you know, should carry his head on high when he walks out of here because Northern Illinois has shown offensively that they can come in and do some damage. And you said it a moment ago, Terry, that they're going to be dangerous when they get into Mac play. Yeah, no doubt. This is a team that's going to be hard to stop because uh, Horvath may be the main question mark throwing the football. You knew you had the ground game coming in. You had the two stars, Wolf and Harris. But uh, you lost some guys at the wideout spot, some injuries. Matt Simon went down. Marcus Perez also lost. Dan Sheldon, number one receiver last year, gone this year. But uh, the passing game was awfully good today as well. You know, in a, in a second ago, we got the highlight from Wisconsin Bowling Green, a team that we had last year, the MAC. Very competitive now. You know, Bowling Green put up 40 something points today on Wisconsin. And I said, you know, going in, this is a team that won it all last year, but it's going to be a tough conference again. Omar Jacobs coming back, the quarterback for Bowling Green. They just got a lot of talent now. And it's, and it's scheduling teams like this where, you know, you have seven teams from that conference playing Big Ten teams today. 
Martin 14 yards since coming on here in the fourth. Mike Massey the tight end. Pretty good trio here at Michigan. Nowhere to run along the right side. Yeah, Massey behind Ecker and Massacoy. And that's three pretty solid players at the tight end spot. And Horvath watching from the other sideline now. Played very well today. So a timeout taken. The crowd doesn't like it. Yeah, Joe Novak not making any friends here in the big house, calling a timeout inside 30 seconds instead of letting the clock run down. Notre Dame coming in town next week. This stadium is going to be electric. Always is, but you're right, when the Irish or Ohio State come to town. And by the way, they've got Ohio State here as well. So the schedule certainly favors Michigan in terms of at least a couple of big games this year. It's at home. Chevrolet players of the game, Jared Wolf with 148 yards, that 76-yard touchdown run early. And Jason Avon, a huge day. Nine catches, 127 yards, and a touchdown. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And Henny also putting up big, big numbers in this is first game of his sophomore season. Chad Henny, 20 of 31 for 227 yards and a couple of touchdowns today. Mike Hart with 117 on the ground. So nobody really stopped anyone today. <laughs> Just the turnovers, which made the difference. Five of them for Northern Illinois. Right in the snap. Ball start. 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. False start will back them up. There's a bot. Pretty good targets, Avant and Breston. Absolutely, two guys, and you know, and Adrian Arrington went down, but definitely two guys. You know, everybody's saying, it, "Hey, we're going to be okay." You know, we're not going to be able to replace Braylon Edwards, but with these two guys and the capability they possess, we'll be just fine in the wide receiver position. Keep it on the ground again inside the 30. All carried, all carried by goes Elijah Bradley, the senior from Hercules, California. He's getting some playing time this afternoon. Crowd a little bit upset that they're taking the time. Michigan, seven and one last year in the Big Ten and six and zero at home. Today, with the win, it will be 16 straight at home here at the Big House for the Wolverines. It wasn't. Well, it's been. Since 2002, the Iowa game back in October 2002, last time they lost. It's the big house. Hanley bouncing outside. Run down from behind at the 22 as the final seven seconds have yet to be played here. Seven and that's it from the big house. So they'll start the clock. That's it. Lloyd Carr, another win. The Wolverines start the season with a win over a MAC opponent, John Novak, and Northern Illinois, 33 to 17. Your final score from Ann Arbor as we take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook. Yeah, Terry, you're going to get a look at it right here. Number 49, John Thompson, right here, is going to come in, break through the A gap, and block that PAT. Block the extra, excuse me, block the field goal attempt by Northern Illinois. And the fumbles late in the first half, really killing Northern Illinois' chances. Henny, another big day to start this season. 33 17, your final. Michigan with the win. John and the guys come up from New York right after this break. This is not what smart travelers do. 
But this is, for our lowest rates on a great car, there's just one place to go. Thrifty.com. Book smart. Tastier, crispier Tostitos restaurant style tortilla chips. You are one lucky salsa. Oh, to have a chip this tasty dipped into you. My little bowl of chunky goodness. Honey, who are you talking to? Tostitos, now even tastier and crispier. I woke up in the middle of the night, terrified. Someone tried to come in my house. Fortunately, we had an ADT security system. Mrs. Parker, this is ADT. We're receiving an alarm. Are you all right? Yes, we're okay. But I'm glad ADT was there, watching out for my family. Don't take chances. Take control of your family's safety with ADT, America's number one security company. Call now and save $100 off when you buy ADT's family package. ADT, always there. Welcome back to New York. John Saunders here in our studios. Michigan wins easily over Northern Illinois. We want to take you to the end of the Air Force Washington game. Washington looked like they had the game sealed up. Air Force has just scored a touchdown to take the lead in the final minute. Well, we would like to welcome those of you who have been watching Michigan and Northern Illinois. Welcome to Quest Field in Seattle for the final 30 seconds of Washington and Air Force. Tyron Willingham's debut for Washington, his return to the Pac-10. Washington had either been tied or ahead the entire game until Air Force went 83 yards and 521, scored in a one-yard touchdown run by quarterback Sean Carney. And now Washington, with one timeout, has to go 89 yards for a touchdown and probably about 69 yards to have a chance at a field goal. I'm Dave Lamont, along with Tom Ramsey. Mark Morgan is on the sidelines. This game tied 3-3 at the half and has been a pleasure to watch in the second half. Newton's career long, by the way, the kicker for Washington, 46 yards. And really, yeah, Isaiah Stanbeck's done a great job here in the second half, been very effective and very accurate. Under pressure this time, though. He'll have to keep it, and he'll get out of bounds as quickly as he can after about an eight-yard gain. 22 seconds left, and second down coming up for Washington. Picked up about seven to the 19, called it eight. Interesting that time, Air Force blanket coverage back there, forcing Stan back to run, something now Washington doesn't need, but at least he moved the football a little bit. Air Force has two timeouts. Stan back on the day has been great. 18 to 24, 223, one TD. Just his second start as Washington's quarterback. He only got the job on Tuesday. Now they have three to the left side for him. Second and short. Well, he wants the long throw to the middle, and he bounces. Tough throw to make. He's running left and throwing right there, Tom. That was not easy. Tough throw, yeah. Three wide outs up top. you got to get a big chunk, and a lot of times you need to go down the middle of the field. Going down the middle of the field, you're probably going to have to waste a timeout, Dave. What they want to do is save that timeout to get the field goal team on if they get in position to get the kicker on. Right now, a little dicey. 14 seconds left. You need two big plays. And third down. Two to go. That really doesn't matter. 5 of 11 on third downs today for the Huskies. Fans of purple gold on their feet, hoping for a little bit of a miracle here. Stand back. Has some time. Guns it. Has his man. Caught. Got to get out of bounds, and they do. Catch made. Nicely done by Craig Chambers, the wide receiver, the sophomore from Mill Creek. Stops the clock. 007 on the clock. Well, you got a chance now with one timeout. You, you really have to get down to the opponent's 35-yard line to give yourself a shot. Maybe 30, yeah, inside the 40, let's say. Well, which has got a strong enough leg. 46 yards is career yep. long. He you, has can't, you, don't have to go, you don't have to go wide. You can go down the middle of the field. They went wide that time. Stanbeck has been so accurate in the second half. Put up big numbers, three wides down this side. All right, let's see what they do. They put three to the right side. Stand back. Three seconds. This ball goes up in the air. He's going for it all right now. It is knocked away, and the clock has run out. Air Force has come back to defeat Washington and hand Tyrone Willingham a loss in his return to the Pac-10. And you can just see how devastated, I mean, the, the contrast here between these two. The Washington players, some of them not even able to stand up yet. They're so devastated. Meantime, the Academy players, and rightfully so, celebrating. 
Well, I think the coaches and the programs have great respect for one another, Dave. And we saw it, a great game by the Falcons. Great efforts on the part of Isaiah Stanback of Washington, a lot of his teammates, Greg Kirkwood, the other Chevrolet player of the game. And in recognition for their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, an amazing finish here. When we come back, we'll join John Saunders in New York. The final here, Air Force over Washington, 20 to 17 on ABC College Football. It's a different world when you've got a Hemi. Charger, unleashed.